those goals. To achieve this, it is important that we succeed in ensuring equitable access to land, uh, in integral rural development, sustainable agriculture, and food security for all. In this regard, our mandate in the National Council of Provinces is to pre represent the provinces to ensure that the provincial interests are taken into account in the national sphere of government. We also have to make sure that through organized local government, space is provided for the participation of local government representatives who have the responsibility to represent the different categories of municipalities as required by the constitution. Thus, at the heart of what we must do is to ensure that we put cooperative cooperation and coordination in the execution of government policies and programs at the center. That is at the center of all the work we do. Program director, in carrying out our mandate, which is expressed through le le legislating, representation, and overseeing executive action, we now have the added burden of caref carefully balancing our understanding of the policy intent and the increasingly unpredictable environment for policy implementation. We have to do this in the context of the increasing and legitimate expectation, expectations of the electorate. David Jefferson, as I conclude, let us heighten our adherence to safe and hygiene practices, wash our hands, wear protective face masks, and observe social distancing amongst others. We must use every opportunity to remind our people about the importance of these measures, which have been proven, proven to save lives. This is self-evident, uh, of course, given our own experiences. With these few words, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this important inter interactive briefing session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Before I Thank continue, you, to, to, before I continue and put the minister on the on the platform, I just want to uh, to to announce that there will be a funeral of uh, the Honorable Advocate Mohammed at half past twelve. If according to our program we can make a progress like that, those that want to attend the funeral virtually can then do it and then we will continue after that. I'm just announcing it. The Chief Whip will actually clarify with me whether I was in my right mind when I decided that we can do it like that. But with that said and done, let us continue. And I want to once more on top of what Chairperson said, welcome the Honorable Minister our comrade, comrade Toko, and uh, to uh, actually make an uh, input. Over to you, Minister, and you are more than welcome. Thank you. Deputy I'm, Chairperson. I'm not Deputy putting Chairperson. any pressure on you. Yes, Honorable, uh, Honorable Mokause. On a point of order, Deputy Chairperson. I'm listening. Deputy Chairperson, if you look at the end of the program, Yes. There are eight, eight minutes allocated to each province. Yes. Now, my point, my point is, uh, the minister comes from the same caucus, the same ANC caucus. Why do we allow provinces to come and make individual plannings? Why can't those plannings be in, uh, um, uh, put into the same report that the minister is going to present? Because honestly, chairperson, you cannot have a plan of just to be presented in eight minutes. It's actually a lie that provinces do have a, a plans. So this was not discussed in the programming committee, nor the WIPs uh, meetings. Hence, I'm raising this issue to say, why do we have to listen to provinces and not even interrogate whatever that those provinces are going to present here? That's my point of order. Thank you very much, Honorable Mokause. I think before I will give the Chief Whip to respond broadly, I just want to bring your attention to one point that we had several ministers here 
and we use the same methodology when we were busy with this uh, briefing sessions. We use exactly the same methodology and you never erase this specific point of order, but I don't want to I don't want to get into any dialogue. Let me give to the Honorable Chief Whip of the NCOP to respond to this specific Chair. question. Honorable Lavis Kahneman. Thank you, Chair. My, my point of order is just a question of clarity. The break that you proposed for people, for members to attend the funeral, will that mean we will break the plenary session until the funeral is done or do we break so that people can attend because if we break until the funeral is done uh, we might run into a problem that uh, we will still be busy with the plenary and then we have to start to attend our other committee meetings thank you uh, honorable Lewis Kahne, i will now give to the chief whip to respond i have said members that want to attend but i would also said that we will discuss with the chief whip as to how it will we will do it then. So I will give over to the Chief Whip to respond on the issue of Makause and we will come back on the issue of the funeral. Chief Whip, over to you. Honorable Chief Whip. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Deputy Chair. I, I, will, I, will, I will request that matters that relates to the program uh, the program is reviewed at the WIPS forum, and I'm covered by what you said of the practice uh, that we do in to extend participation of provinces in a structured way, uh, where provincial executives uh, interface with the National Council of Provinces. So that can be taken care of at the relevant forum, what uh, Mem Gausi is raising, because this is well thought of in its culmination of our planning. The, the second matter, is that I, I have interacted with the office bearers also on the other side of the house that all of us are aware that uh, the honorable member unfortunately passed on yesterday late and today the family will proceed and the, and the, and the relatives close with the funeral with some office bearers of parliament that are able to join but I'm advised that the memorial service will take into consideration of all members who are unable to attend the funeral proceedings today, like the National Council of Provinces is in session, and it will not go beyond uh, the time of 14 hours uh, uh, today. So that will be the request uh, that other arrangements will be made to factor into consideration members that could not attend the funeral as it is. Thanks, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Chief Whip. I think the Chief Whip put it, I think the Chief Whip agree with what I've been saying, that those that can, uh, can be allowed to attend and the rest of us will proceed with our program. And I also want to, to emphasize that we have been doing the program in this fashion. So I will, I would want the, the WAPRI to discuss it and come back if there is a change of plans. And with all of that said and done, we will now allow the Honorable Minister to make an input over to you, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair of the NCOP, Chairperson of the NCOP, Chief Whip of the NCOP, Deputy Ministers, um, Clavis Squatcher and Stubotlamini, the MECs of uh, Agriculture in the respective provinces, Honorable NCOP members and special delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I must say that as we start uh, this discussion today, I also note that we are doing so within the Women's Month. And one actually extends our condolences to the women who have actually died during this month at the hands of their spouses or the loved ones, some of them who have actually become the victims of gender-based violence perpetrated by those that they know and those that they don't know. In particular, the women of Mtualume, we want to actually bow our heads and honor them and remember them. But at the same time, as we remember the struggles of women of the 
past who marched to the union building and those actually who led the struggles against land in the 1913 and those who led struggles against the past laws in 1912. We also honor the women of the present. Here, I would like to make some, um, well, maybe note some of those women who have played an important role even now as we deal with the issues of COVID-19. Dr. Rachel Chikwamba at ARC has been responsible for the production of the antibodies. Dr. Amanda Skepu at Mintech has been responsible for the development of point of care diagnostics. Dr. Marita Kotze in Stellenbosch has been responsible also for the diagnostic work that is important during this period of COVID. The vaccine program leadership, which is also led by two women, researchers Glenda Gray and Helen Rees. I can also say, as we speak today, I want to honor the women farmers and farm workers and women in the agribusiness uh, sectors who have been able to ensure that as a country, we can remain food secure even at this time. Chaperson, COVID-19 has caused unforetold negative impact in the lives, health, and livelihoods of citizens of our country. We mourn the lives of those fellow citizens that have been lost during this period and wish those affected a speedy recovery. While COVID-19 measures are aimed to protect human health and lives, the impact is also profound in the social and economic system. This pandemic has also impacted on household, national and global food security. The pandemic has shown stark reality and fault lines in our national and global security, uh, food security chains. It also reminded us of the intricate interwoven and interlinked nature of agriculture and food sector with other sectors of our economy. It exposed inefficiencies in the pricing and distribution of food in the local market, where access and affordability of food was a challenge during the lockdown period. The pandemic also made visible the previously under-recognized roles of informal food sector as a vibrant market and also the informal sector, the role that it plays as key distribution network for food to our communities. Within the continent, COVID-19 pandemic has been reported in 54 of Africa's 55 countries and in varying degrees. The disease has severely stretched health sector capacities, but just as concerning, it has greatly dislocated economies. Lockdowns intended to reduce diseases transmission and infection rates have closed down much economic activity and dislocated whole value chains with consequent loss of public revenues as well as personal and corporate incomes. Poverty rates are shooting up while production, trade, and GDP of all countries are either stagnant or in steep decline. In the midst of exploring ways of managing the impact of COVID-19, South Africa adopted a holistic approach towards food security and nutrition, ensuring that nationally food systems with specific emphasis on securing of supply for both national and international commodities are protected. Noting the importance of food security in the African continent, South Africa is the chair of the African Union Specialized Technical Committee on Agriculture, Rural Development, Water and Environment, convened a meeting of ministers responsible for agriculture and food security on 16 April 2020. The ministers noted that these were signs of emerging disruptions on the upstream and downstream links of the food and agricultural value chain in AU member states as a result of measures taken to slow the spread of the virus. The ministers agreed on a declaration on food security and nutrition during COVID-19 pandemic. Ministers further agreed on five intervention areas to advance and change the trajectory of food and nutrition security. And these are the use of crop calendars and recommended actions during COVID-19 outbreak in the Africa region, ensuring effective social protection, response and inclusive recovery in the context of COVID-19 in our continent, instituting measures to supporting domestic markets in the context of COVID-19, taking advantage of the mechanisms of the newly created Africa and continental free trade area, and lastly, safeguarding input supply chains 
and lessening dependence on imported inputs. These interventions were also endorsed by the Southern Africa Development Community Ministers responsible for agriculture on the 22nd of May, 2020. Noting that the issues of food security and nutrition are broad and require a continental, multi-pronged, multi-sectoral and intergovernmental approach broader. The STC on agriculture proposed and convened the meeting of ministers of agriculture, ministers responsible for finance and ministers responsible for trade to craft sustainable recovery agenda for our continent. At this joint session on 27 July, 2020, we agreed on a joint ministerial declaration and action agenda under the theme, building resilient food systems through agricultural trade and investment to achieve food security in Africa. This is one example on how recognition of the intricate linkages with other sector departments can be addressed in a structured manner. Similarly, approaches and interventions were made by South Africa at the multilateral pl platforms, including the G20 of ministers in April 2020 and at 164th session of the FAO Council from 6 to 10 June 2020. I'm providing these continental and international interventions to show the enormity of the challenges posed by COVID-19 in global food systems and to further position our impact and contribution as a country on global discourse on this subject matter. Relating to our historic intervention, when His Excellency President Ramaphosa announced a hard lockdown for 21 days with effect from 26 March 2020, very few of us could have imagined the ensuing controls that government through the National Coronavirus Command Council would have to implement in order to manage the spread of this disease. Agriculture was one of the lesser affected sectors as a right, right at the onset of the regulations promulgated. Agriculture was declared an essential service. However, during the hard lockdown, there were few agricultural sector commodity value chains which were not fully operational but most of these were accommodated when the country transitioned into level four restrictions. These value chains mainly included for floriculture, wool, cotton, tobacco, and liquor industries. The movement to level three relieved the outstanding value chains except for the liquor and tobacco, although the liquor industry was at some stage open under level three. Under level two, which was pronounced by the Excellency President Ramaphosa on 15 August, the whole of the agricultural sector is open and our services as the department are also open to meet the demands made on our services. At all stages of the lockdown, the department and the agricultural sector partners cooperated to address regulatory gaps and operational bottlenecks emanating due to movement restrictions. The cooperation was constantly alive to, to the emerging issues and had mechanisms that fed into the government processes to avert food shortages. During this period, the department concluded trans transitional bilateral agreements with a number of trading partners to permit export of our produce into their territories under revised conditions created by COVID-19. These bilateral arrangements, aided by the opening of the parts of the ports of entry for export, enabled South Africa to export high revenue and in agricultural commodities. This included citrus exports as the lockdown coincided with the initiation of our 2020 citrus export system. In our attempt to address the possible negative impact of COVID-19 on our small scale and subsistence farmers, the department made an announcement on 26 March, 2020, availing 1.2 billion to assist the category of farmers to increase production. A further 100 million was set aside for utilization by commercial farmers through the land bank. Of the 1.2 billion, a sum of 400 million funding was set aside for the farmers participating in the proactive acquisition program. A sum of 20 million was set aside for hygiene products to assist farm workers. Relating to the applications for this funding, which were opened on 6 April 2020, the criteria targeted South African small scale and subsistence farmers who had actively been farming for a minimum of 12 months prior to the application date. These farmers were expected to have a turnover of between 20,000 and 1 million. 
we further set ourselves a stretch target of awarding the funding to 50% women, 40% youth, and 6% to people with disabilities. The maximum amount that a farmer could qualify for was set at 50,000. The prioritized commodities were poultry, vegetable, fruits, and winter field crops. The applications were, handed, were handled during the hard lockdown, and there were challenges experienced in terms of lodging of applications. We were assisted by farmer organizations, commodity groups, traditional leaders, communities, including NGOs, national development agency, and extension services to compete to complete and launch applications. We would like to thank these stakeholders for their hard work. The adjudication process involved the recommendations from municipalities, which were then assessed at provincial level before concurrence and their conclusion at national level. Updates on the progress made were provided to the members of the executive council through MECs uh, and ministers meetings. The MECs made a telling contribution in terms of the process and have been instrumental in ensuring that the process had good oversight and governance. Progress to date. The process of issuance and redemption of vouchers still continues and the current figures may still change due to the process of ensuring that no farmer who right, rightfully qualified is excluded from benefiting from the process. Due to error, during the adjudication process. Furthermore, there is an appeal process that we have set aside to ensure that those aggrieved by the decisions taken have the right to appeal through the appeal authority. This added process will ensure that administrative justice is served to applicants and that the system of adjudication is open and transparent, subject to review. The department has managed to procure and distribute 400,000 three-ply face masks the three ply face masks were purchased before there were regulations uh, permitting the use of cloth masks. This was to assist, particularly during the season of harvesting, that our farm workers are actually protected. The disbursement of funds from the department to the farmers holding accounts, particularly those of PLUS, has been processed for the 146 projects. This process is in partnership with the commercial banks, commodity groups, and the farmers. Preparations for summer cropping have also begun through procurement of production inputs and mechanization. We also added 46,000 agricultural extension advisors for a period of one year to assist the plus farmers. Of these 46, there are 19 livestock specialists, 18 are crop specialists, and nine agricultural economists. Allocations to smallholders and subsistence farmers. In terms of allocation of funding to smallholder and subsistence farmers, a total of 54,767 applications were received for consideration, of which 15,513 were approved and 39,254 were rejected. Of the 15,513 approved, 5,097 were women, 2,430 youth and 148 people with disabilities. The total sum allocated thus far is 556,000. Um, Chairperson, we are acutely aware underperformance in terms of allocation to women, youth, and people living with disabilities. The department is embarking on a program to promote maximizing participation by these targeted groups in land allocation, owning of farms, and business operation as eloquently emphasized by the president during his Women's Month a message, in which he indicated that 40% of procurement by government should go to businesses owned by women. In terms of payment, a sum of 144 million has been paid to service providers, particularly for the, the um, vouchers, as well as the PEs. The department is also working on ensuring that the service providers are paid within the prescribed 30 days after providing service as prescribed. I just want to share with honorable members some of the challenges that we've experienced. The implementation was executed during a period of hard lockdown, and therefore the restrictions in terms of movement of people had a negative impact in terms of the number of applications which complied with the said criteria. 
there were also harsh realization that we as the department had to face as there was a stark observation that record keeping for our farmers needs serious improvement. We also observed a number of briefcase farmers who saw this as an opportunity to enrich themselves at the expense of genuine farmers. And luckily, our system and also working with the Auditor General, as President indicated that during this process, the Auditor General will be, will be actually working with us in this process to ensure that we actually observe some of the weaknesses and improve our controls. We also observed, Chairperson, that part of the challenges that were faced by individuals was actually the movement to get necessary documents to be able to meet the requirements of our applications. We're also investigating and will announce once found the names of farmers or individuals that we are now told are selling vouchers that they have received. Unfortunately, there were also a number of public servants who applied for the interventions who we actually excluded from benefiting from this process. I'm just mentioning these because it's important for us as we indicate what we've been done to also share with you what challenges we've experienced at the moment. This process of assistance towards COVID-19, as I indicated, is currently being audited by Auditor General and the findings of the Auditor General will be made public to ensure that this process is transparent. We also intend to publish the names of all who have applied for this intervention. Currently, as we speak, we've already handed over the report to the chairperson of the portfolio committee in the National Assembly, as well as the select committee. Chairperson, the reduced 14.4 billion budget of the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development includes the transfers to execute the mandate of the sector, particularly to the provinces. With the reduced budget, provinces are compelled to reprioritize projects to ensure that critical projects that are aimed at food security are prioritized during COVID-19 period, particularly by our sector. Subsequent to the supplementary budget allocations, there have been developments which will supplement interventions within the sector outside of the normal budgeting process. I just wish to indicate, honorable members, that we are working with also the Solidarity Fund through the Food and Agricultural Organization to make sure that as they are looking at food security intervention, they also look at assisting on the production of food rather than only food parcels. Through this work, the Solidarity Fund has actually earmarked 75 million of their COVID-19 relief for farming input vouchers. 53% of the beneficiaries will be rural women according to their target. We will work with them to ensure that women, subsistence and smallholder farmers continue to receive support beyond the lockdown. As we know that one of the weaknesses is where farmers get support and in the next season, they are not supported. And therefore the gains that you have, might have made in one season are not actually realizable on an ongoing basis. And I think this is the issue that we also need to deliberate on as members of parliament, because at times, what is seen is that where this continuous support is given to people, it's sometimes uh, seen as double dipping. Where else in the agricultural sector, once of intervention without aftercare and ensuring that the people have continuous support either through farmers credit can actually regress on the um, gains that they've made. COVID-19 has also put a strain on public resources, but this crisis also provides an opportunity to rethink investment and financing mechanism to agriculture. To this effect, the department has embarked on a consultation process with key stakeholders on agriculture and agro-processing master plan to co-create an inclusive and sustainable agricultural sector. At a meeting held on 26 June 2020, business, labor, communities, and government committed to work together towards a social compact in agriculture that will ensure that we rebuild a more resilient sector. The sector is already co coining plans for life beyond COVID. These plans will align with the district development model as launched by President towards fundamentally changing our approach to local government. Chairperson, as I conclude, it's important for me to indicate that the 
prospects of the agricultural sector are very promising, even under COVID-19 period. The country has experienced a bumper grain crop of 15.5 million tons of maize, as well as contributing to our GDP 2020. In the first quarter report, agriculture has grown by 27.8% 20 as compared to the last quarter of 2019. Furthermore, projections from a number of economies predict positive growth for the sector for the 2020 production financial year. We also have committed ourselves on the rapid release of land. We will do so chairperson within this current year. Our aim is that before the end, first week of September, we would release the adverts for land release, state land release allocation that the president has made. And we trust that we will ensure that with the minimal resources that we have following the supplementary budget, we'll be able to prioritize within the sector so that we can attend issues of food security and land allocation. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for a very comprehensive uh, feedback. And also, we appreciate the interventions mm. that is there that have been done by your department. But with that, we will now give over to the NCOP members and the special delegates if there is any clarities, but also questions that they want to ask, and let us use the raise your hand function, and we will we will continue, and from there we will get responses from the minister, and then we will go over to the next session. Honourable Kluter. Thank you, Chairperson. I just want to make sure am I audible? You are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister, for your for your presentation. Um, I've got a few remarks and a few questions. Uh, the one starting with especially the farm. Minute, I, will, I will give you three minutes each. Three minutes. Before. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to raise uh, or ask regarding especially farm attacks. Now, we all know it's got farm attacks as a, as a broad impact. It affects the families, it affects the, the farm workers, it affects food security as well. Um, I just want to know, although this is not part of the security cluster, but whether the department uh, or the minister or her department um, is working together with, let's say, the, the security cluster, especially the police, to attend to, uh, to farm attacks and in which way. Uh, I was also thinking just now whether um, the, the department has, has made an assessment of how farm attacks, especially uh, in South Africa, uh, affects food security. On the question of food security, and she mentioned that uh, there, there is money being made available. I'm just, I find it very strange that in the, the special appropriated appropriation budget, that 1.8 billion rand was, um, was lost Let's, let's put it that way, or um, uh, affected downwards in the in the appropriation bill. So they actually lost 1.8 billion rand on the line item food security. Then the other question is, moment. Maybe this is part of the the whole issue regarding food security in South Africa. Is that uh, we, uh, as far as I can see, we have not seen the master plan on 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 food security or the the white paper. It's that the guiding policy document that we can say this is what we're going to use for, towards food security. And let me give one um, example of that. The minister just spoke about land release and land acquisition and land claims, but during the previous parliament, it was indicated through a question that as much as 93% of beneficiaries rather prefer to take the money uh, than the land. So those uh, claims that were successful, 93% of those beneficiaries indicated that they rather take the, the money. Now, that's fully their, uh, their, their right to do that, but how's that affecting food security in our country? And how's the minister attending to that? That's my question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kluter. Honorable Gillian. Thank Honorable you, Deputy, Gillian, yes. Thank you, Deputy Chairperson. 
<clears throat> Let me first of all thank the minister for that brief update. And also, um, Deputy Chair, let me also um, thank the minister and the deputy minister. During this COVID-19 process, when we had problems that they were accessible to all of us in, in the Western Cape province. Now, Deputy Chairperson, uh, my question to the Honourable Minister, um, what are the challenges and the delays faced by the Land Claims Commission in terms of land claim settlements in light of the COVID-19 pandemic? And how is the department assisting the commission in settling about 434 outstanding land claims spread throughout the Western Cape province. And then Deputy Chair, if I may, my other question to the Minister is on rural development. The rural development policy framework outlines a developmental support system that consists, amongst others, a reformed communal tenor system which addresses unresolved tenor issues in the former homelands. How has the department addressed challenges faced by the rural communities and the negative impact on their livelihoods as a result of the pandemic compounded by insecurity of land tenor? And how is the department planning and engaging with institutions of traditional leadership in order to realize a very inclusive developmental programs adequate enough to address challenges and the impact of COVID-19 on the rural livelihoods. I thank you, Deputy Chairperson. I hope the Minister Effa. No. Deputy Chair is not there seemingly. Chairperson. Mr. Sidibe is wondering whether he's been heard. Uh, well, How's the chairs, please? Chair, 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 okay, chair, thank you, Chair. Thanks. May the Chairperson take over, please? Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, uh, whilst the Deputy Chair is uh, being connected, problem is being solved. Why don't we go ahead? Um, the last person to speak was from the Western Cape. Um, why don't we uh, finish that part? Honorable member? That's Honorable Gillian. Uh, Honorable Gillian? Chairperson, um, yes, thank, please, you. Please, yeah. thank you very much. Did you get my, my, my second question? Did the minister get both questions? Yeah, please, please raise it again. Yeah. Must I raise both? Yeah, both, yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah, Chairperson. Please. Let me, let me um, raise my questions. The first one is, what are the challenges and the delays faced by the Land Claims Commission? in terms of land claim settlements in light of the COVID-19 pandemic? And how is the department assisting the commission in setting about settling about 434 outstanding land claims spread throughout the Western Cape province? And then on the rural development chairperson, the rural development policy framework outlines a, de a development support system that consists, among others, a reformed communal tenor system which addresses unresolved tenor issues in the former homelands. How has the department addressed challenges faced by the rural communities and the negative impact on their livelihood as a result of the pandemic compounded by insecurity of land tenor? And how is the department planning and engaging with institutions 
our traditional leadership in order to realize a very inclusive developmental program adequate enough to address challenges and the impact of COVID-19 on rural livelihoods. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now proceed to uh, Honorable C.F. Smith from the Limpopo. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, in in a response to a parliamentary written question from the DA regarding uh, programs to curb the scourge uh, of farm murders, uh, the Deputy President, whilst condemning such violence and uh, reiterating government support to, to hunt down, arrest and prosecute those that uh, perpetuate such violence, uh, also stated that we should not give in to playing partisan politics by politicizing what a broader societal what is a, a, a broader societal issue that cuts across political uh, political and ideological divides. It is saddening that government believes in a in the cynical notion that the ma uh, matter of farm murders, where ordinary South Africans offer, endure violent torture, rape and death, is an issue that is being used solely for political or partisan processes uh, purposes. The fact of uh, the matter is hundreds of farmers are leaving South Africa uh, for other countries to ensure their safety from the violent attacks on themselves and their families. And in a result, we are losing experienced and established farmers that has a negative impact on food security. What engagement have you had uh, with the Minister of Police Minister and uh, on this matter? And what contribution did you make uh, to ensure the safety of our farmers? Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, for assisting me. I was just out for a moment. We will now go to Honorable Arnolds. What's about the question, the Deputy Chair? Yes, but people are raising their hands on the ratio and function. And if you don't have a ratio and function, I will write it down. But I'm continuing with those that I'm having in front of me. So let us allow Honorable Arnold. We'll come to you, Honorable Zandamela. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't have the function. If you can write me down. I will write you down. But thank can you. we allow Honorable Annals now, please? Uh, thank you, Deputy Chairperson, and uh, greetings to the Minister and the members of, of Parliament and all the, the representatives. Um, Chairperson, yes, uh, the Minister has mentioned now in terms of those farmers that has abused uh, um, uh, the vouchers um, of, of in this time and it's, it's now not clear from us now why the minister didn't come so he's saying it's an investigation and it's been audited but she didn't come with that uh, information because that that is the most important information because we don't want the abuse of funds that is that must go uh, to those farmers that that for assistance but my, my, my other question and concern that we have is the minister didn't even mention nothing about uh, farm evictions. And, and we are very concerned, especially here in the Western Cape, in, in the Cape Islands region. I, I can maybe mention one of those farms, the poor, for example, farm that is currently uh, evicting um, in the process of evicting, evicting farm workers. And, and we know it will escalate now after the lockdown. And, and what is the minister doing in, in this time? Uh, we want a lockdown on farm evictions, or we call it a moratorium. So this is very important because the, the inhumane living conditions and the, the treatment of farm workers here in the Western Cape. Minister, please do something, do it now. Then you are mentioning now about the rapid release of, of, of land. Since 1994, you are talking about that, but we don't see nothing, any, we don't see anything. You say in the first week of September, we will see what you, what you, you meant when you say rapid release of, 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 of land. Then uh, the other thing uh, that I want to mention, the effect of COVID-19 are taking place against uh, the backdrop uh, of, of climate 
emergency supply shocks associated with extreme weather uh, events combined with the demand shocks in a depressed economy could create food security tensions. And we all know this, what additional measures and support have been put in place to address the immediate needs of black farmers, uh, especially here in, in the Western Cape. And I'm talking about the West Coast region where farmers, black farmers didn't receive anything uh, from, from, from government in terms of support. And I've spoken to some of them. So this is now a, a great concern uh, for us here in, in the Western Cape. Uh, I will conclude with that. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Annals. Uh, I just want members, please, you have, you have raised your hand on the system. Your hand is raised, you will, your turn will come. Can we just be patient, please? We will now give to Honorable Chai. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, for the opportunity. And also thank uh, the minister for the input. Uh, my question would be first one on the communal property association that are still uh, critical uh, of critical importance, uh, uh, minister, in ensuring that there is a productive ownership uh, of the land and to further secure the nation's food security. The problems of the CPAs are well known: uh, management and administrative challenges engulfing most of the CPAs have never negatively impacted on the productive use of the land held under the CPAs. What sort of support has the department provided or will be providing to the CPAs during the COVID-19 pandemic in order to guarantee their productive use of the land during COVID-19 and post COVID-19? The second question is on the beneficiary selection and land allocation policy. Can the uh, Honourable Minister give us an update on the development and implementation of the beneficiary selection and land allocation policy and how beneficial is the implementation of this policy within the department and how it will further ensure that the identified challenges of land allocation are adequately addressed? Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Chai. The next will be Honorable Dutoy. Honorable SF Dutoy. Thank you, uh, Chair. Honorable Minister, on the 26th of February 2020, Minister Glamini Zuma declared a national state of disaster, and this was gazetted on the 4th of March 2020. Um, it was declared a drought crisis affecting multiple provinces as a national state of disaster. If you go to point two D and E of that disaster as gazetted, it said that it's for preventing or combating disruption or dealing with the destructive and other effects of the disaster. The minister, the drought is still persisting. We, we received rain in some areas of the country, but uh, the drought is a continuous thing that is, that is going on. Um, minister, it's common knowledge that some provinces received small allocations to assist with drought. Uh, with the drought relief, but a large portion of these funds were used to drill uh, boreholes in communities that, that was also needed instead of providing fodder, etc., to farmers. And these allocations are insufficient. Um, Minister, as you well know, the initial state of disaster that was declared by Mr. Glamini Zuma was used to kickstart the COVID 19 uh, disaster fund. We still have problems and issues in large parts of the country, the Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, where animals are dying and people are losing their jobs and livelihoods as a result of failure by government to provide them with the sufficient um, uh, means to, to, to basically survive. Minister, what measures will you take to assist with sufficient drought relief for all farmers? including commercial farmers, in spite of the fact that your department focus on support for emerging farmers and specifically women. We need assistance for the farming community as a whole, Minister. The main focus must always be food security. Minister, I was covered by the Honorable Kluter with regards to farm murders. That's still unacceptable. I believe that you will give sufficient answer on, on that. And um, then my last point with illegal land grabs and trespassing that's taking place more frequently on farms, what is the minister and her department doing to prevent these land grabs from taking place? 
and assisting farmers of such, uh, if, if such devious acts does take place to ensure that food security is protected in the country at all times. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Honorable Joy, Honorable Bibi. Um, Gabonga Segala Sado, Mohum Nears and El Tuba. Giving a lama special delegates at Kamga Guma province, or nine, especially Motete Gile, the province Amigos Lunatal, Emisiwa, Ubongi Mloy, no Mamus Pila. Um, Minister, my first question will be uh, What is the level? <clears throat> cooperation and collaboration between the department, uh, your local municipalities, mining companies, um, churches, and other stakeholders in working towards a social compact that will see advancement of our land reform program. And is there a po positive response from other landowners? in donating parcels of their unused land to the states. And if not so, what is the department doing to realize effective social compact on land reform? I'll talk about from the water license. Joba says, Guti, Amala, water license in this Gakulu, he says, and the Zabam shop. the COVID 19 pandemic has exacerbated or compounded the crisis. Uh, which is already faced by the sector in terms uh, of their uh, drought and also climate change. As we know that the president in his son in 2020 indicated that water licenses uh, would be used in 90 days. And what has been the practice and turnaround time in the issuing of water licensing during the pandemic? Thank you very much, Honorable Bibi. Honorable Zandamela. Zandamela. Honorable Zandamela. Oh, thanks, uh, Chairperson, uh, Deputy Chair. Uh, I've got just two questions to the Minister. There is uh, the, the land claim in, 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 in Chagastad, east of Matmas, Fatsibanda, between the Mawela. Uh, it's a group of families, Mlochwa, Masina, Maseko, Gwenya, Matibula. Those are the families that uh, launched the claim against the friend Daniel, Mr. Fred Daniel, who, was, who has since turned the farm into a game reserve and was granted permission uh, to do so in 2001 by the, by the ruling party, while the claim was not resolved. What is your department uh, involvement in resolving and assisting the claimants of the land as the matter has been dragging since 1998? And then uh, my second question to, uh, to the minister is uh, the funding that uh, he, he spoke about in, in her speech that uh, you are supporting the small scale farming in order to assist with the food security. But we've got this uh, small scale uh, farming project in, in, in Kangala region, uh, Dr. J.S. Moroka and, and Tembisile uh, municipalities. They are, they are actually not getting any assistance from the department. There's no water. Uh, the grain is uh, that uh, are given the opportunity to, to farm in those uh, pieces of land. They have to fetch water using buckets uh, 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 for them to, to, to make sure that uh, they, they survive. Right? And the following organization is Gamli Misi in what, uh, 18 Dr. Jess, 
and the two youth uh, organizations in Polar City, uh, in, in Tebisile Hani. And then I just want to find out the, 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 the assistance that the minister spoke about. The minister spoke about it. And what is it and uh, uh, how is this uh, assistance that the, 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 the department is providing uh, to this uh, uh, small scale farming uh, projects? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Zandamela. Honorable Dongeni. Dongeni. Uh, thank you, Deputy Chairperson. Morning, members. Morning, special delegates and the society minister and deputy minister. My question is, the department has made available, available 93 officials working on the settlement of labor tenants applications. Is there any update on how the department has dealt with the labor tenants claims? If there is no update or progress made, how is the department then intends on building on building staff capacity in order to effectively process labor tenants claims? This is my first question. The second one, what is the impact of the pandemic on veterinary services in the country? And are there provinces lacking in the services of the veterinarians? And if so, how is the challenge being addressed? Thank you, Sakela Diabule. Thank you very much, Honorable Ndongeni. Honorable Matibe. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair. I've got uh, two questions. The, the first one is on Spluma. One of the aims of Special Planning and Land Use Management Act is to provide inclusive, developmental, equitable, and efficient spatial planning at different spheres of government. In the light of the pandemic, uh, Honorable Minister, and in anticipation of the post-COVID-19 society, what are the measures the department has put in place to ensure successful implementation of SPUMA at all spheres of government? The second one, uh, uh, Deputy Chair is on animal disease. Uh, I, I represent Limpopo uh, in this uh, uh, NCOP. The, the outbreak of foot and mouth disease last had a very negative impact on the productivity of the sector. Uh, you will understand, Honorable Minister, we are heavily affected in that part of the country because of our close proximity to the Kruger National Park. What are some of the unique challenges faced by the department in the containment of foot and mouth disease during the pandemic? And what has been the response of the department? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, Matibe. We will still continue. We will request then that Honorable Leigh, if you can then ask your question now. Can I come yes. to Oh, okay, I think I'm still noted. It's fine. You are noted, Honorable Tedibe. Can you be patient, please? Honorable Lee? Kiala Baham Dilastilo. Mukurutama, when I love a palaha, a la little elegir sana levali murui, monache, loba fai, yemonuke. Halor eh? Tell stuff in crack at ditilazo, meha lohur carabo kinya. Letten Chalusa who get in seven and left a palaha, little Hosidira, who lega who to Solosa Timotuomo Buconu Piri. Kekalabacala in Puso is a Tarahani lady call or said Mabati, maybe two tuba, whoopelele, moditeonzi, Galab Hamdula still. Thank you. Can we just make sure that the, uh, the, the, the translation services is on, please, uh, to the host? Uh, Honorable Nguenya, you, you are the next one. Honorable Nguenya. Thank you, Chair. Deputy Chair. Can I please ask? Um, Pat was saying on the email and the chat. Sorry, 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 ma sorry oh, Honorable Nguenya. The minister just want to ask a question. Yes, Honorable Minister. 
Uh, Deputy Chair, I was going to ask the previous speaker to just, uh, with my due apologies, to just indicate the question because the translation service was not working, so I missed her question. That is exactly what I have observed, but I will, I will, we will come back to the Honourable Lee, and we will, we will just request that the, that in the meantime they also look into the translation services. Yeah. Then, then we will come back to her. Honourable Lee. I hope with your indulgence, please. Thank you, Minister. We will, we will look into it. Honourable Gwenya, you, you may continue. Thank you, Chairperson. Give me a little Gibong and Gihalali Sele, U Minister Utitiza, for being elected as a chairperson of the African Union Specialized Technical Committee on Agriculture. I wish you all the best, Minister, and I know that you will present us well in AU. I have a few questions, Chairperson, to ask. I have been listening to the briefing and the presentation. My question, Chair, uh, I wanted to know whether there are any challenges on the ground that are being experienced by the farmers and suppliers on agriculture support fund voucher. If yes, what are those challenges? How many smallholder and substance farmers that were assisted in housing? with production input, animal feed, agriculture, remedians, and a livestock as part of intervention to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, Chair, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, whether SONA com commitment that were announced by President Ramaphosa on agriculture, land reform, and rural development will proceed as planned during this financial year. Can we get an update? I will pause for now, and I will come back with more questions in the next round if we are given an opportunity. I thank you, uh, Program Director. You will have to pay me for that one. Honorable Mokause. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deputy Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. Minister, the administrative mess in relation to the management of land reform farms is a cause of great strain. Not long ago, Minister, we wrote to you about the Babanango land restitution claim, where in a small group of people working with German investors have taken over the management of the land and are even evicting legitimate beneficiaries from the land. Your answer to your letter was not committing any action to resolve this issue. This is the same across the country. Land reform projects are supposed to spark a new vision for agrar agrarian reform. But as it stands in the case of Babanango, your department's administrative ineptitude has caused much pain and suffering. What specifically are you doing to resolve the Babanango case? And how central are land reform projects to the reinvigoration of agriculture in this country? What are you doing to resolve the administrative crisis in your department, Minister? Again, Minister, um, what COVID has exposed is the undesirability of our dependence on a large farming estate on a foot, as well as dominance about five large supermarkets in selling of the food in this country. Now, had we aggressively promoted the growth of small farming sector, we would not have suffered as much as we have uh, suffered during this COVID-19 disaster. Minister, for this to happen, we need to promote small scale farming and we need to focus on empowering households and smallholder agriculture. Minister, has the COVID pandemic and its attendant challenges changed your views about the expansion of smallholder agricultural sector in South Africa? 
Thank you, Deputy Chair. Honorable, thank you, Honorable Mokkause. Honorable Ryder. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chairperson. Um, Minister, there's been an alarming increase in land grabs and land invasions, particularly over the lockdown period. This is a direct reflection of the failure of your department to achieve meaningful land reform, despite the vast amounts of land that you already have at your disposal. The land is there. The fact is that land grabs are a result of desperate people who have real needs which have not been met by government, despite repeated political campaigns where they've been promised that they will be prioritised. Minister, the result, therefore, has been a massive burden on local government budgets where the unfunded mandate of dealing with land invaders usually ends up. The result has been a massive burden on the courts, on the South African police services, and most especially on legal landowners who are forced to pay large amounts of money to protect and secure their constitutional right to own property. Minister, my questions, what is your department doing to turn around your failures and accelerate land reform to meet the demands of South Africans? whilst ensuring that those who are given land or who buy land are protected? And what is your department doing to ensure that your failures no longer impact on the members of the public, on other departments and other spheres of government? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Ryder. Honorable Sedibe. Uh, <coughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Deputy Chairperson and greetings to colleagues and the minister. I, I'm only, I only have two questions. Uh, one on the, on the farm atrocities, uh, abuses and exploitation. Uh, I hear my, uh, the honorable members from the DA, both of them spoke uh, or are more concerned of the farm murderers. But the, the are not mentioning the calamity that is reigning there in the farm across South Africa in terms of farm abuses and exploitation, wherein the white farmers do as they wish in terms of dismissing the people and not paying them uh, the living wage, uh, which I think you are aware of, Minister, as you will know that most of the farmers today they prefer to use uh, people from outside the country, Mozambique and Zimbabwe, and so that they can abuse them because they don't have a choice. They want any, any cent to put the bread in on the table. But the main concern I'm having is also the continual uh, abolish, uh, uh, demolishing of the ancestral graves. Uh, by these white farmers, more especially the new owners of the farms. You will find a situation where a farm owner is tired or is retiring and selling the farm to a new owner. And that farm previous owner uh, has stayed with these people, maybe before his parents, for more than 40 years, some were born and brought in those farms. And then the new farmer will come and say, I don't want you anymore here. And then they demolish their ancestral graves, they demolish their houses, and they, they remove them forcefully in the farm. And the department is mum on this. And I think there is an act that protects uh, these farm dwellers, but nothing uh, is happening. The white farmers are doing as they wish to our, our people. And you will know, Minister, that to us as Black people, graves, ancestral graves are important because that's where we do our rituals and get our blessings and everything. And it happens and happens a lot, uh, not only in Pumala, West, Pumala is West, uh, but is everywhere in the country. Um, I think the minister must assist us with the act and to which extent must, be the, must the act be implemented and the, this uh, gruesome act uh, being stopped by the department because it's, uh, 
very tremendous and it leaves our people uh, very disappointed and angry. A uh, case in point, uh, it happened uh, in, 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 in uh, Peter Thief, where a white farmer even killed the cattle and the goats and destroyed the maize uh, uh, equipment for Mr. Hatteb. They even shot him in the eyes, leaving with the bullet now. And since uh, uh, 2013, nothing has happened, no help has offered. The family was moved. They are staying in a in a hall. It's a family of food. They were born and brought and grew up there uh, in Petriti from Kondo farm and so forth. And then the other question is the post settlement support on of the land claimants. I don't think the department, the honorable minister, is doing enough there. Uh, hence, we find that uh, we end up saying our people are unable to use the land. But there's no proper government intervention after the settlement to uh, provide the necessary skills to the new land owners, the land claimants, to use the land and give them all the necessary support in terms of uh, agriculture and agri-processing. And the last one is on the land claims. Um, there is a general problem here in Pumalak, which I would like to bring to your attention, Minister, and if need be, uh, given the opportunity after the ease of the lockdown, uh, you can send a team or a commission of inquiry or whatever, you can come down yourself and listen to the people because they are being frustrated by the regional land claim commission. The officials, they connive uh, with the whites. Uh, the land that is claimed, they are not giving them the necessary hectares to those that are successful. But there are also hundreds of land claims still outstanding since 19. 98 and all of these uh, land claims have been gazetted so the process is being frustrated by the officials which are known and they are common in Pumalanga. we can even send you their names they are three or four because they divide the communities once the 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 process is at the final stage they go into the communities and create two thank groups you. thank you honorable Sajibe. i think you made your point because you have taken more time, I've allowed you because it's the first time that you are yes. here, but now you are taking too much time. Can All we right. now continue? Thank you, Honorable Auka. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you for being here today. Honorable Minister, as a member of the NCOP for the Northern Cape, I have on behalf of, on behalf of the uh, Democratic Alliance in the past driven the whole issue with regards to drought relief on very high levels. I had questions that was put to the uh, president as well as to you on previous occasions. And we were very grateful when early in January, the Northern Cape was declared a drought disaster area. And then later on in February, the whole of the country was declared a drought disaster area. As you know, Honorable Minister, we did not have higher than normal rainfall in the biggest parts of the country since then. And in certain areas like the Northern Cape, the Eastern Cape, Free State, and even some other provinces, there were less rainfall than we expected and less rainfall than normal. This had the effect that the severity of the drought in certain areas are even higher now than it was earlier this year when the drought disaster area was declared by Minister Nkosazana Daminizuma. Do you agree, Honorable Minister, that there are areas across South Africa that are still experiencing severe drought? And if so, what conversations have taken place between you and Minister Daminizuma of Kopta in order to address the severity of drought in certain areas of our country and to again implement or reinstate the state of disaster on specific areas that are still experiencing severe drought. Our farmers out there really are battling. I have been on a tour throughout the whole of the Northern Cape visiting various farming communities and I can promise you 
that their situation on ground level are much worse now than it was on the 16th of January when the Northern Cape was declared a drought disaster area. I have been covered with regards to the farm murders by my colleague, the Honorable Bayers Smith. With regards, just one last question, Honorable uh, Minister, with regards to the fact that civil servants also illegally applied for COVID-19 assistance for farmers, did the minister submit the names of those civil servants to the Public Service Commission and to the South African Police Services as this was an attempt to commit fraud? And if not, will she be willing to give a list of all public servants that illegally claimed in a pandemic like this, pretending to be farmers to claim money? I, I really think it would be a good thing and we urge the minister to, to do so if she has not done that before. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Deputy Chair. Honourable thank you, Honourable Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Uh, Deputy Chair, the Minister mentioned uh, the impact of COVID-19 on livelihoods. Uh, agriculture is one of the more labour-intensive uh, sectors of our economy, and employment in this sector has also been hard hit by this pandemic. Minister, can you indicate what measures has the department put in place to secure the current jobs in the agriculture sector and how effective has have these measures proven to be? Deputy Chair, with regard to support to black emerging farmers and smallholders, the minister indicated the availing of funds and some other measures that the department used to help the smallholder and emerging black farmers during the COVID-19 period. However, Minister, if you could indicate what were the challenges that the department faced in reaching out to most of our vulnerable farmers who have either failed to meet the qualification requirement set out for the COVID-19 relief fund and or failed to apply for the assistance. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Thank you, Honorable Sheikh. Uh, Honorable Celine Lay. Honorable Celine Lay. Uh, th thank you, Deputy Chair. Uh, Minister, AKSSN. Uh, you, you get married. You didn't tell us now. You changed your surname without telling us. No, my uh, surname is Lutsuli. I'm still oh, Lutsuli. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Minister AKSSN, I will see you on the info. So, what is Nama Plus Amaning? You got cool gas, Gula Marichin, Afana, Noko, Umzinati, Kanye Nikin, Hy, Kanye Namanig, and Jama Richin, Lapo Abasebens, Vasima Plazin, Yang at Solanga is the Bonello, Ules Catiso Pupan, and Gang Mayokut Abanin Bama Plus, Ababa Palisine, UIF, Sintalosin, Umyango Wako, or Nazo, Uba Caesar. No ba kasa da baba sebenz bao iga kuka zaba o mama betu no baba betu ugusi na baba gwa zugus baba gwa zuguna gege la indi niabo niabo. Thank you, Honorable Lutuli. We will now give Honorable uh, Matebula. Eh, na kensa chepesel. Eh, Minister, shibuti social media na iku ekanta ya le minga isaya ya bangwa mpras la bangwa bapun. Ewa mangu maprasi wangani baadhi saa tila wangu kwa pune kwa ikampu nolo. Shukuti sasa shabu mbiri kuna bangu maprasi lava ba sungula ba ba kufanya na bantu na irrigation scheme akawa the six a greater gian manespanit lava bangu maprasi lava aplaye mpu no wati maalum mara awa pune kang shana ministera ihi ni plani le menga na yona kupuna bangu maprasi lava kwa wanga pune kwa kiki. Na la babanga apply amanga punenga kink na kins. Are you finished, Matibula? Yes. Minister, uh, the Honorable Matibula also asked a question on the chat group. So I think if you are not uh, uh, totally clear, you can follow up on the chat group to be put a question there. And uh, we will now allow uh, Honorable Christians. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Deputy Chairperson. My question is around the COVID-19 Agricultural Disaster Support Fund for smallholder and communal farms. Now, 
it has come to my attention, um, some farmers have informed me that in the free state, out of 900 applications, only seven of those applications were approved. In the Northern Cape, there were 7,425 applications, only just above 1,000 of those people, of those farmers um, were approved for such assistance. Now, these farmers have also noted that officials have visited these farms. Officials have actually assisted them in completing these forms and paperwork and the correctness thereof. Upon completing the forms, the officials then returned to verify whether the forms have been completed correctly and indeed whether farmers um, were, um, whether, whether they actually have, um, what's the word I'm looking for, whether they could actually receive such funding. And the verification actually showed that these farmers could actually get this funding. Now, um, after that, I wrote a letter to the project manager of the Free State asking him to give me some information about the, applica about the applications. He then put the blame on the committee and said that the committee was lagging behind in verifications and um, he did not know where the process was. Now, I was wondering if the minister could give us some information as to why these farmers did not receive this assistance um, and how far these committees are then in completing it and when we will get an answer as to why only seven out of 900 applications in the, North, in the free state were approved and only just above a thousand applications out of 7,425 applications in the Northern Cape were approved. My second question is around CPAs, especially again in the free state. Now these farmers, um, and I'm specifically speaking about a small farming community in the free state called Oppermansgronde. These farmers um, more than um, 10 years ago applied for land ownership they have been living on these on this farm of um, for a number of generations now for and they have applied for the land um, however they are still waiting for government to tell them how far the process is and when the land will be rightfully transferred to them they have been uh, they have been complaining about the cpa who is fraud to, um, with corruption and fraud um, yet uh, government is doing nothing about it. So my question is around Oppermansgronde and when that farming community will know about land transfer ownership to them. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Christians. We will give to Honourable Modise Tebogo and then we will come back to Honourable Lihi and she will be the last person that will be asking question, the questions. Tebogo, Modise, Honourable. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, Deputy Chairperson of NCOP. And let me welcome all the members of the NCOP special delegate and <clears throat> our minister and deputy minister. Minister, uh, let me welcome your presentation. It shows that the department has a good uh, intent to give uh, service to our communities. Keep it up, Minister, and your deputies. But Minister, let me ask you a question. Can you explain how the, uh, the Land Claim Commission intend or plan to ex examining a new and improved business process to ensure that the settlement of claim is more expeditiously dealt with and that there is a fast tracking system, Minister? Is it your question? Minister? The, is the first question. The second question, Minister, uh, President, during his uh, state address, so 2020, February this year, he said, government will accelerate in the release of the strategic located state-owned land to address human settlement needs, among others in urban and peri-urban areas. The COVID-19 comes for 2019, Minister. It has indicated to us a need to clarify and hunger among other majority of our citizens. 
Can minister tell us really what is the problem or what is the cause of the delay in the department's rapid release of strategic re uh, located state land in meeting the various needs of our people in the relations of in to human settlement? Minister, I'm asking this question to make sure that Deputy Minister. Oh, Deputy, oh, Deputy Chair. Oh, no, maybe. Thank you very much, Deputy uh, Chair, the Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP. Thank you very much, Honorable Modice. Honorable, let me apologize to you for the fact that there is a weakness in our translation services. And the minister really wants to know your question. So I would really uh, request that if you don't mind, can you please repeat the question that you have uh, asked formally? Because the minister could not quite uh, grab what you have been asking. Okay, Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. It assists. That person would you like me to respond? I, I it's now your turn, but I just on the last question, are you are you fine? My translation is still not working, Chairperson. But I think let us start uh, responding to the to the questions. I think we can get assistance as we as we are continue. So you can, you can just Chairperson. Uh, yes, Honorable Mapperson. Yes. No point of order. We are listening. Can the deputy chairperson of the session assure the council that the last question posted by the EFF is going to be properly translated to the minister so that the public also understands, the constituency understand what the member was asking and it should be responded to accordingly. Can we get that assurance? Thank you. Honorable Makause, before your point of order, I already said that we will process it and make sure that the minister will have the question. I think I said it very clearly. So we will now allow the minister to respond to the questions of all the members, whilst I've requested the secretary to work on the translation on this. Thank you very much. Over Thank to you, Honorable Minister. Um, Thank you very much, Minister. Um, Deputy Chairperson, and thanks to the members for the questions that they've asked. And I also appreciate that in this platform, we've got uh, MECs from various provinces who would also elaborate as they give their inputs on some of the issues that have been raised specifically relating to certain provinces. The first uh, member raised the issue on pharma tax, and this was also elaborated on by Honorable Bayas and other members. Honorable Chairperson, I just want to say that as government, the issue of farm attacks, farm murders, farm workers abuse and farm workers attacks, as well as rural communities, is a matter of concern of government. It is for that reason that we have been working with the police to actually deal with this matter and actually ensure that perpetrators are brought to book. You'd recall in various instances, the Minister of Police, even when he mentioned on the statistics of crime, the crime statistics rather, he indicated farm attacks, farm murders attacks, and what has happened and what government is doing. Last year, Minister of Police actually launched 
the rural sector strategy, rural safety, security oh, sector yeah. strategies, working okay. with the farming communities, whose aim is really to make sure that we deal with the issues of safety and security in the farm areas as well as in the rural communities. This also is not just about farm murder, it also relates to livestock theft that we've seen on the increase affecting all farmers, be they small, medium, or large. And I just want to say to Honorable uh, Bayers, I think it is a misunderstanding of what the Deputy President was saying in the answering. Deputy President was just saying the matter of farm murders, farm attacks, should not be politicized by any of us. We should deal with these issues as matters of crime that has got an impact in our economy and the livelihoods of citizens engaged in farming and those who are not engaged in farming, particularly in the rural sector, that all of us as a country and more so as government must be concerned about to ensure that we address. And we continuously engage with the Minister of Police and even condemn where such acts have happened. If we are able to actually pick it up even before the minister does so, when some of the farmers send communication to us, we engage the minister of police, the commissioner, but also provincial commissioners to make sure that such matters are attended to. And it is important to also appreciate the issue that was raised by um, honorable uh, member from Pumalanga, raising the issue of farm workers abuse that we've seen and also condemned, which continues in certain sectors. Actually, what this says is that all of us as South Africans must be concerned about the safety and security, the working conditions of farm workers, as well as their safety, as well as the safety of farmers, because without your farm workers, farmers on their own cannot succeed. So that safety and security for all those involved in agriculture, be they small, medium, or large, must be a concern of all of us. Yes, there is an impact. We may not have the immediate statistics in REN value of the impact of farm uh, attacks in the food security of the country, but surely there is. Because when such attacks happen, it affects the productivity levels of those who are engaged in the enterprise. You raised the issue, honorable member, with regards to what has been uh, the impact in terms of the choice of people who have opted for money in lieu of land uh, restoration with regards to land claims. We have said it repeatedly in this parliament in both houses. If you look at the Restitution Act of 1995, it literally indicates three awards that people can choose in respect of land restitution. One is land restoration. Secondly, is alternative land where such land restoration of the original land may not be available. And thirdly, is the financial compensation where those who were unjustly moved for, from their areas may actually opt for financial compensation because they might not want to return back to the area where they have moved. So these three awards have been exercised by government. What we've seen is in the urban areas, in large majority, communities have opted for financial compensation. There have also been a mixed choice where some of the communities, such as in the District 6, some members of the community opted for financial compensation, others opted for land restoration. It's the same if you look at East London in Malinde, you had that choice where some of the communities chose land for development of houses, others chose financial compensation. And this is the exercise and the right of individuals, families and communities to make the choices they've made. And therefore, when you look at the bulk of uh, those lands that would have been restored back, those have not been taken out of production. Those farmers have continued to farm in those uh, communities. The issue raised by Honorable Gillian 
in respect of the challenges to restitution during the COVID-19 period. I must say that there has been, as you know, that part of the work that the restitution has to undertake is continuous engagement with communities. So during COVID-19, some of those have actually been delayed because they can't call large gatherings of more than 50 people in such instances. And in order to avoid challenges, it's better when the majority of those communities who have claimed a particular land are part of those meetings other than the committees or only a few people in order to ensure that you take everybody's view into consideration. Secondly, the impact has been on undertaking research as well as verification of claimants. And I must indicate that verification of claimants has to happen on a continuous basis because at times when the original beneficiary has passed on who was the main claim, you have to make sure that you have those beneficiaries or the children of the main member so that in the discussion of the choices, they are actually involved when a member who was the claimant has actually a disease. The issues of negotiations, therefore, get impacted uh, in the current uh, period, if I may uh, say to honorable member. On the issue of land tenure reform, particularly in communal areas, that's an ongoing uh, issue and we intend to actually table a legislation following consultations with traditional leaders. Deputy Minister Squanta, who's also in this platform, actually led two study tours to engage with other countries on how they've dealt with issues of land administration in rural areas under the authority of traditional leaders and how these have ensured that women equally participate and young people in that land administration. So that process is continuing and we are hoping that we will be able to conclude the legislation. I must also say that even in the current period without that legislative arrangement being dealt with, the current intervention that we've made have supported subsistence farmers who are actually operating in those communal areas. I mentioned the Solidarity Fund who have actually committed the 75 million and they've specifically engaged with traditional leaders and culture. They will be actually directing the support to small scale and subsistence farmers operating in communal areas. So the fact that we don't have a much clearer legislative arrangement in communal areas does not hinder government to continue rendering services in those communities. Honorable uh, Bayer, I think I've responded uh, to your question, uh, which was the same actually with the issue, question that was raised by an honorable member who was the first to ask uh, the question. With regards to the issue of abuse of vouchers, indeed, those are being followed up because we actually have requested those members who have made reports to clearly tell us who are those beneficiaries that have actually started selling uh, the vouchers. I have not brought it here because indeed that is an ongoing process that must be dealt with by uh, our law enforcement agencies. With respect to the farm eviction, I just want to say, if you look at the regulation even during this lockdown, and it was announced by a Minister of Justice that there shouldn't be any evictions, particularly during this period of lockdown. But we also know that where there had been instances of evictions where government has been informed, we have actually intervened in those um, areas. With respect to land release, indeed, we are continuing with that uh, process as it was announced by the president. And I just want to indicate, linked with the question that has been raised by Honorable Modise, actually, in respect of that issue, last year, we released 14,000 pieces of land for human settlement, which the Department of Human uh, Settlement, Sanitation and Water are actually working with to ensure that they do give a settlement using that state land. 
also the Department of Public Works made available state land for human settlement as well as for agriculture, 300,000 of which it's land under claim. Some of those uh, have already been transferred by the Land Claims Commissioner to the respective communities that have been affected. The issue of the Communal Property Association is actually an ongoing matter that we must address, um, Honorable uh, Hai. Not just in terms of their regularization, but also on how we effectively support them as government to make sure that such land is productive. But I must indicate that there are challenges because in some instances, communities through their CPA have actually made choices to work with particular strategic partners. Some of those strategic partners are actually former landowners who were part of that land. Some of those arrangements have worked positively, but some have actually not, which has exacerbated tensions amongst community. The issue of governance of CPAs is another matter of concern. And it's a matter where we have intervened as department where some of the CPAs are under administration, but some of the CPAs have actually been assisted through training to ensure that they have annual general meetings, particularly those executive committees on an annual basis to take into consideration uh, community members on the status of their land. But it's not consistent in all the same. And also we found in certain instances where executive members don't convene meetings and enter into arrangements without consulting with community members. And some of them even selling pieces of land or leasing such pieces of land to certain individuals without going through the engagement of communities. And where we have found that such happens, we've actually intervened and where law enforcement agency has to take place, we have actually engaged with them. On the beneficiary selection policy and on land allocation, I must say that this was tabled to cabinet, went out for public consultation. It actually has received very positive results because it gives transparency for everybody to know how is land allocated so that everybody will know who has benefited and why those individuals have um, benefited. Honorable Dutoy, on the issue of the national disaster, uh, particularly that ensured that those who were affected by drought is uh, finally declared by COGTA after we've been working with them since around October last year when we actually informed COGTA about the looming disaster and ongoing disaster in areas such as Northern Cape as well as uh, Eastern Cape and Western Cape who had actually been having um, concurrent droughts that have been uh, continuing. Part of the delay was because at a provincial level, there was no detail on how these resources that were expended in the previous years have been used. It went back and forth. And the intervention of the department in that regard was to assist the province. But while assisting the province, we actually used comprehensive uh, agricultural support to give assistance to those uh, farming communities, such as the 30 million that was actually expanded from CASP in the Northern Cape so that we do not delay our intervention while the Department of COGTA deal with issues of accountability. And I must say, one of the weaknesses that we've noted in our system is that we do not have a line budget which deals with a agricultural disaster specific. No, in our own budget, we do not have a line item that deals with a disaster so that when it occurs, you can actually deal with drought, for instance, or flood in the agricultural sector. Secondly, we do not have a situation where we have agricultural insurance that is widespread. You have some with SENVES, but it doesn't cover all farmers so that like we do with life policies and car insurances and house insurances, we can also contribute towards ensuring that we manage uh, the disasters when they impact on us. It's a matter that we must continuously um, 
deal with. With regards to the issue of uh, land grabs and land invasions, um, I am. I think the issue must be looked at in two ways. One of the issues is that we have got a backlog in our country in terms of uh, housing. In a number of uh, African communities, particularly in the townships, you would find that the state then prior to 1994 stopped building uh, housing. And therefore children of those who were the first beneficiaries ended up in the backyards building um, either rooms to be able to have all the members of the family accommodated. But some of those people till to date have not been able to get assistance by the state. And this is a matter that the Minister of Housing is actually dealing with. Because what we have seen in areas such as Western Cape and in Gauteng is that these are not people where sometimes allegations are made that these are people who are coming from somewhere. It's more the people who are backyard dwellers in their own family homes who have got their own families and regard and want security of tenure on their own. And we're working together with the Minister of Housing on how we can address this. And I don't think it would be a matter that we raise it in the fashion that it has been raised by Honorable Tutoid because all three spheres of government are engaged with this matter. It's not a failure of this sphere or that sphere in terms of addressing uh, that issue. But it also talks to how, as a society, we deal with the issues of the legacy of our past, because we need to make sure that we share equally the resources of this country. That actually also talks to land. How do our landowners in South Africa participate effectively in ensuring the release of land? Secondly, how do our landowners, because I think that's one side in my view that is missed in the debate when we talk about the land claims and land redistribution. Much of the time is wasted on negotiations and negotiations with landowners on the transfer of land, either because they take us to court disputing the land that is under claim or the land that government wants to buy. And tremendous resources on market value goes to those transfers when you have wasted a lot of money in terms of litigation. And this talks to the reality that we must address as a country and not be blindsided on those realities that are there, which impact on the pace of land reform in South Africa. I agree with Honorable Bibi on the need for social compact on land reform. And I must say, that some of the landowners, like we saw last year, the mining communities distribute, I mean, donating some of their hectares of land to communities. We've also seen some of their farmers participating and ensuring that they assist government in order to address uh, the land. But the truth is, there are still those farmers who are not willing to come to the party, and that's where the issue of engagement and accepting the reality of land dispossession in our country comes to because we mustn't pretend that didn't happen. And that is what we are correcting today. But unfortunately, there are those who want to profit even in the correction of that original sin in our country in terms of land dispossession. There are certain issues that have been raised which are specific like uh, Zandamela, which you have raised specifically on uh, the claims around Black Plus, and I may not have an uh, answer now, and I will come back to you in a written form so that I'm able to address um, that issue. And I think Honorable Tudor must not continue repeating Honorable Chair his question on the chat because I've addressed it. Issues of land grabs have been dealt with, and I've addressed that question. I've not avoided the question, but I've said we are addressing that matter together with the Ministry of Housing, particularly on those issues that relate to the need 
for housing development. We've also dealt with the issue of land invasion on some of the state land that we've seen around Gauteng, particularly on Roslyn. So the matter has not been uh, avoided. I am not sure if he has got a specific matter that he would want us to address. We can respond to him in a written form, Honorable Chair. The issue of labor tenants, Honorable Ndongeni, indeed is a matter that we are addressing. We have committed ourselves that in the 2021 uh, financial year, we will intend working with the master uh, who was appointed by the court to actually settle about 500 uh, claims. But I must say that we will not meet that deadline given the delay that we have had. But I'm happy that the court has actually accepted the plan that has been presented to the court by the special master working with the department on how we are going to release uh, land to support a uh, labor tenant. Honorable Matiba, on the issue of foot and mouth, we are working with the province to make sure that indeed we deal with this issue of uh, foot and mouth, particularly on those communities closer to the Kruger Park, so that the issues of surveillance become continuous in order to manage uh, that disease. The issue raised by um, Honorable Nguenya on challenges faced on the vouchers, I've actually raised some of those issues and also on the issue of uh, land release. Honorable Macau, so you raised the issue on Babanango land uh, claim. The department has been dealing with this issue. And we had responded as such, we first engaged with the province of uh, KZN, the legislature, the portfolio committee then. And I think it's important for me to explain what happened on the Babanango matter. When the claims were lodged, there were two communities that launched the claims. And in the process, made that claim as one. And the claim was settled, land transferred to communities. What has happened in the process is that between the communities, there is now a view that they would want to actually unbundle and be given pieces of land as two different communities, as opposed to the initial agreement of the claim being settled as one claim. And that's the matter we're attending as a department. We've engaged the Department of Environment. I had a mini meeting with the Minister of uh, Environmental Affairs, Minister Chrissy, and we agreed that we will intervene with the province to ensure that that uh, work that is being done by SMVELO, working with some investors on creating um, a game lodge or a um, what you call um, a game farm is actually halted until we resolve the claim issue that has been raised by the community with us. It's not a, a, a new claim. It's an old claim that was settled, but however communities feel different that they now don't want to be part of the common CPA, the pieces of land must be shared between those communities on where they were moved earlier. So the matter is being addressed, uh, Honorable Chair. In the past week, I was actually speaking to the member of the provincial legislature of uh, KwaZulu Natal, who is dealing with issues of petitions on the very matter of Babanam. Honorable Radia, you raised the issue of land invasion, as well as evictions. Uh, what are we doing to make sure that uh, farmers are protected? You do have the issue of the extension of security of tenure that actually deals with the issues of um, evictions and the security of tenure of farm workers. As government, where illegal evictions have happened, we've intervened in favor of the farm workers. We've also made sure that there are negotiations between farmers and farm workers in respect of the land uh, issues that sometimes occur, either as a result of overgrazing, those matters are continuously uh, being dealt with by our department. With regard to the issue of land invasions, again, as I indicated earlier, this matter is being dealt with. 
to make sure that as much as the states have said, if you look even on the latest regulations of level two, we have said evictions must not happen, but at the same time, illegal land invasions cannot be accepted even during this period. On the issue of drought relief, I've actually uh, responded to that issue, Honorable uh, Ockham. On the issue of uh, the civil servants to, who have been applying for COVID, as I indicated, those names are public. They are there in the report we have given to the two uh, committees here in Parliament, the Select Committee as well as the Portfolio Committee, but also we have sent those names to DPSA as well as to the respective departments from which those uh, officials are working. And I'm sure the Department of uh, Public Service and Administration will ensure that relevant um, mitigation strategies as well as where law enforcement must deal with matters, they will do so. On the issue of the of Honorable Sheikh, with regards to what are the current interventions that are being made to assist uh, communal farmers as well as smallholder farmers. The COVID-19 indeed addressed this matter, but as indicated, not everybody was able to be assisted. And we've said working with the MECs, we would look at how best we assist these uh, farmers who didn't uh, become successful in uh, the application that had been made. Honorable uh, Lutuli, you raised the issue of assisting uh, farm workers who did not benefit from UIF. I think the first instance is making sure that we deal with issues of compliance from farmers, particularly those who employ people in their commercial farms that they actually register. And I'm happy that there is work that has been done by States as a to ensure that we can have a full sense of the commercial farmers in South Africa, which also looks at whether those farmers are actually compliant in terms of SARS regulations. And that would be the same in terms of working with the Department of Labor to ensure that they are registered on the um, UIF, particularly the farm workers, so that we don't find a repeat of such uh, situations that we've seen. The Land Claims uh, Commissioner, Honorable Modise, is working with the department to look at how we can fast track the land uh, claims that were lodged in 19, between 1995 and 1998. And the work that they've been doing with Project Guyasa intends to actually improve the business process on the settlement of uh, land claims. On the issue of human settlement and land release, I have actually addressed that. Uh, I'm seeing Honorable um, Lei. why is there no Farmers Association in Northwest? How does the department intend to revive farming in the Northwest? Why is the department not working with institutions of learning in Taung and Pochestrom in order to induct students in farming. The department is working on a relay with a uh, of storm and down, and I'm sure on Mohono, if she's here in the platform, she would actually deal with that matter on the training that is being uh, undertaken to support farmers in the Northwest using those agricultural colleges, as well as the University of Pochefstrom. The farmers organization, there are farmers association in the Northwest, but they choose which farmers association they belong to. Some of them belong to the African Farmers Association, others belong to the National African Farmers Association, others are part of AgriSA, and others are part of uh, FUSA, for instance. So, and I'm not sure whether there might be a specific uh, issue that relates to farmers association, but reading the question, there are farmers association in the Northwest, as I've indicated, all of these four farmers organization members, farmers choose on their own which farmers association they want to belong to based on what that association 
intention as well as their constitution and what they seek to achieve. The department, how does the department intend to revive farming in the Northwest? I hope actually <laughs> MEC Despo would respect will respond in detail. But one of the things that we all know is that farming, for it to be effective, you require not just land, not just water, but also extension and advisory service on a continuous basis and uh, research as well as marketing. All of these are issues that in the provinces, our MEC are engaged with working with farmers to support them to actually improve their farming systems. Honorable Chair, some of the matters are in detail. I will actually table the answer by the end of this week to ensure that we give fuller record for the members on the questions that they've asked, because some of them were actually more specific on particular areas, and I may not sit at here, have the detailed response on those. So we will try and make sure that we answer and respond back to members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We appreciate the comprehensive way in which you have responded to almost all the questions. And we take it that there is really specific issues that need specific answers, and it's not necessarily what we have invited you for. And we appreciate the fact that you are prepared and willing to uh, to actually respond to that in writing. For that, we will be we have come to the end of the first session and we really want to appreciate everyone who participated in this first session. It was very, really constructive and we will now give over to the House Chair, Honorable Nyambi, to continue with the session where provinces will actually add on, particularly with regards to the responses in the times of the pandemic in the, the agricultural sector. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We appreciate it. Some of us, about five or six of us, will be for the next hour attending the funeral, but all of the members will still be available, including the chair person of the committee. Over to you, Honorable Nyambi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Chairperson. Greetings, Minister, Deputy Minister, Special Delegates, MBC's colleagues. It's always an honor to come together like this as the August House call NCOP to reflect about uh, challenges facing our country. Without much ado, I will take this opportunity and to welcome all the relevant uh, MECs that will be giving the provincial plans to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in agriculture, land reform, and rural development. Of course, Minister has given us a picture of the situation in our country. Uh, honorable MECs, you are allocated a maximum of eight minutes. That's maximum. Not anything more than that. I'll be calling them in an alphabetical order. The first one will be Honorable MEC Matt from Eastern Cape. Honorable, Honorable Mayor. Honorable House Chair. On a point of order. Honorable Makawuse. On a point of order, House Chair. Before. Uh, Let me take the point. Before uh, the Deputy Chairperson of the House um, gave over to you, he did not ask if any of the members still have a follow up or if we still need a second bite of this session. I think it's much proper for you to just go through that process. If ever there's a second bite, or are there any other follow-up questions relating to this session? Thank you. Honorable Makawuse, you are raising a valid point. The unfortunate part is that I'm not uh, dealing with the first session. I'm dealing with the second session. So when she was concluding, she was very clear that we're getting to the second session. So if ever there's anything that is to be attended in relation to the first session at an appropriate forum, we're going to be able to do justice to that valid point that you are raising. Let's deal with the second session and allow MC Meth from the Eastern Cape to give us uh, the situation of Eastern Cape. Our chairperson, 
before that house chairperson this is exactly, this is exactly why at the beginning of the first session we raised an issue of provinces being given an opportunity to come here and just have a bite that is not a plan that is not going to be an outline plan of provinces it's just to come here and have a talk shop and actually stealing of our time as members of the national council of provinces to engage with ministers and deputy ministers on this platform and that is totally incorrect house chairperson Honorable members, we are the house that represents the interest of provinces. There's no way that as NCOP we can deprive province to have a say in the National Council of Provinces. And that issue that we are raising, it was canvassed at the beginning. I was listening and, and, and a ruling was made and Honorable Mohai and yourself, you were clarified. So let's get, let's allow Eastern Cape to take us through. Chairperson, Honorable MC I'm not checking. No, you, you Honorable, must take the point of order. It's according to the rules. Honorable, I, I'm not. What's your point of order? My point of order is, Chairperson, it is, it is not right for you to say that there's a second session now and the first Chairperson uh, is now gone and, and you are now presiding. It's one session that we have. So the member of the EFF is correct in saying that there must be a follow-up and clarity in terms of the, 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 the answers that the minister has given. Chairperson, Honorable, point of order. We are even temporarily distorting what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's a new session. I'm not saying it's a new sitting. I'm saying I'm chairing the second session. And the session has to do with the input of provincial MECs. That's what I'm saying. Let's go back to the first session. The first session. The point of order. Thank you, Chairperson. With all due respect, the point of order I raised is that uh, there was a, there is a need for a second round. But my point of order to the, my honourable colleagues is the following: the program has been approved in the WIPS meeting, indicating the time allocations for that. So there was no time left for a second part of se sessions. But that brings me back to the original arguments or discussions in the WIPS group. This session should actually, we should actually convert this to a full oral question session to the minister so that all the answers can be on, questions could be answered and the follow up. So I would propose that we call on an oral question session for this section with the minister and continue now with the program as is. Thank you. House chairperson, house chair on a point Thank you. On a point no, you can't call, no, you can't call a point of order on top of a point of order. Allow me to entertain okay. All right. the, yeah. Honorable Labuskahan, thanks for your uh, uh, input. Uh, of course, we're going to have that session as NCOP where we'll be dealing with questions. Honorable members, let me appeal to you and allow the program to go on as approved. Let us not amend it. And we're going to have um, an opportunity as members of the National Council of Provinces to engage. And the uh, minister was very clear that some of the questions that were asked were so fortunate because we do have the provincial embassies that will be dealing with the situations in different provinces. So let's allow them without wasting much more time unnecessary. House Chair, on a point of order. House Chairperson, on a point of order. Yes, I'm recognizing you. House Chairperson, it is understandable that the issue that we are dealing with here today of land reform, it's a very thorny issue in South Africa because land was dispossessed from black people. Now, the, the kind of attitude that is displayed by the DA and yourself, we do understand that you are actually preventing us to continue with su such sessions so that we ask proper and particular questions for our constituencies 
to be responded to. So the fight is going to continue House Chairperson. We will get our land back, irrespective of whether you prevent us here together with the DA or not. Is it really an order at this point? Uh, let's allow on Honorable Meth to make her input. Honorable Meth from Eastern Cape. Uh, House Chair. Chief Whip. Honorable Mess, you are recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable House Chair. Good afternoon to you. May I please uh, go to my presentation? Thank you. Um, Sorry, Honorable House Chair, there is something blocking my Eight minutes my is your maximum time. Yes, Honorable Chair. There's, this, there's an, something here, a glitch here, a technical glitch. I'm sorry about that. Uh, allow me, Honorable Chair, to greet you, Honorable Chairperson, and the Honorable uh, Chairperson of the NCOP, the Honorable Deputy Chairperson, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Honorable Deputy Ministers, Honorable House Chairperson, Committees and Oversight, Honorable House Chairperson, Members, Support and International Relations, Honorable Members, Honorable MECs, Responsible for Agriculture and Rural Development from other provinces, the President of SALCA, Special Delegates, good afternoon. Honorable House Chair, my presentation will cover uh, the following points. The Eastern Cape COVID-19 food production program for vulnerable household food production, the livestock improvement deliveries, custom feed lots performance during lockdown, pest and disease outbreaks control, distribution of personal protection equipment, support to the Department of Health, spring water protection, protocol for mitigating COVID-19 interprovincial movement of seasonal workers, agriculture sector recovery plans, COVID-19 disaster agricultural support fund, proactive land acquisition strategy, stimulus package. A total of 20,000 vulnerable households were identified using the local municipalities in teach and register. In the implementation, Dr. Dai is working in conjunction with the Department of Social Development to integrate all the interventions in the vulnerable households. Dr. Da has allocated 40 million budget for this financial year. Each household will be supported with food uh, production pack valued at 2,000 rand, consisting of seed seedlings, fertilizers, indigenous chicken, chicken medicine, and grain feed. During the lockdown period, we have supported 116 smallholder farmers with 84 bulls and 377 heifers across the province. We supported farmers with 15 heifers and one bull each, with young farmers receiving 20 heifers and one bull each. Eastern Cape Custom Feeding uh, Program prepared 244 cattle for the market from April to June 2020, benefiting 91 farmers. These were sold to both informal and formal markets at a revenue of 1.5 million for livestock farmers. Ngangeng Ili in Amatole District Municipality is the only feedlot that has small stock sheep and it sold 56 sheep with a total revenue of 70,000. A total of 59 cattle from the six custom feedlot facilities were exported to Mauritius, generating a total revenue of 65.2 million. Uh, I'm sorry, 675.2 thousand rand. To ensure continued support uh, during and post COVID-19, we are currently implementing the following programs. 71 boreholes, 216 dams are being scooped, 10 deep tanks are renovated, nine animal handling facilities, 
66 kilometers of fencing and seven stock water systems. On pest and diseases outbreak, we as a department responded swiftly on the outbreak of African swine fever and African armyworm. Working with the National Department, we provided PPEs for farm workers, rural communities, and field officers. To date, 52,633 masks, 1,914 sanitizers, and 39,000 soap bars distributed to farm workers across the districts of the province. We are also manufacturing sanitizers and masks. Funds were availed to manufacture sanitizers at Doni uh, Institute in collaboration with Rhodes University, targeted to reach 5,000 liters by the end of September 2020. To date, we produced 2,275 liters of sanitizers. Honorable House Chair on Masks, Solo Akasha and Rural Development Institute is targeting to manufacture 10,000 uh, who compliant cloth masks. These are being provided to communities. Capacity at Tati and Bofu training centers in Dr. Da were used to produce these face masks. To date, a total of 5,437 cloth masks have been produced by these two institutions. Uh, in assisting the Department of Health, six mobile veterinary uh, clinics were availed to Eastern Cape uh, Department of Health to increase the field screening capacity. Three RNA extractors and PCR machines were provided to augment the existing co provincial capacity for laboratory testing. These were deployed to the districts of Sarabatman to Nodier, uh, Bayes Nodier local municipality located at Aberdeen and Sisekama and two to Oatambo and Alfonso district. You have worked with our RATU a unit in our department and protected springs in four villages in Joka, the Afrenzo, Krisani, and Oatambo districts with 32 taps installed, benefiting 940 households, while 179 temporal jobs were created. The project will be rolled out to further uh, six villages. The Premier, working with the MEC, initiated cooperation with Western Cape to manage cross-border migration, especially for seasonal workers. A technical team involving Dr. Dar, Dart and Western Cape Department of Agriculture was put together. In July, the implementation of the COVID-19 protocols for cross-border movement of farm workers was implemented. A joint technical team was developed for other areas for cooperation for farmer support, such as technical advice, training, research, economics, and vet services. It is expected that it will contribute to greater efficiencies and seamless support for farmers. We've got agricultural recovery plan for even post-COVID. A task team was set up comprised of agricultural commodity stakeholders and government officials that meets weekly. It reviews food and agricultural value chain status and challenges to enable and monitor progress on remedial actions. There are work streams that are operational. Eastern Cape GDP contracted is minus 0.8% in the first quarter of 2020. Five industries that contracted uh, are mining, manufacturing, construction, electricity, and trade results uh, in loss of business and loss of jobs. And it increased the poverty levels and increased the crime, etc. In the Eastern Cape, the following industries expanded on the quarter to quarter basis. Agriculture with the largest increase up, to, up by 27%, finance up by 3%, transport up by 1%, and government services by 0.7%. On our house chair, on seasonal grain production, it is continuing and we are targeting 28,000 hectares across the province, in particular in Afrenzo, Oatambo, Jokabi, Krisan, and Amatole district at a value of 94 million. The procurement process is underway for support in input and mechanization. On the delivery of the, on the livestock production investment, we delivered a genetically superior bulls and heifers to commence, or we are planning to commence as we delivered in the previous uh, months, but we'll be commencing for this financial year. A total of 93.6 million has been set aside to support farmers on wool, genetic improvement, custom feeding, animal health, poultry, and piggery projects. And this initiative is expected to create 677 jobs in the province. 
On the irrigation schemes, we want to revive those irrigation schemes as outlined in the slide. And irrigation business plans have been prepared in partnership with commodities for funding purposes. And a total of 3,406 sustainable jobs will be created. On the national program, we are also beneficiaries on the 1.2 billion fund uh, on disaster agricultural uh, uh, disaster fund. The fund was meant to support the producers to continue producing and to ensure food security and uh, independence of the country. A total of 1,915 applications of the value of 80 million were approved for our province and we appreciate that program very much. That availed 400 million budget to support smallholder farmers in plus farms. Our province benefited. 24 farms have been approved, and to date, a total of seven farms have received 63.4 million. Commodity organizations are implementing agents. In conclusion, Honorable House Chair, the department is on track to implement the above uh, COVID-19 plans and programs to mitigate the impact of the pandemic in agriculture and rural development. Support is constantly provided to farmers through extension and advisory services to access these interventions and ensure their success once awarded. Procurement is monitored and fast-checked to ensure that implementation in the next planting season is not missed. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Thank you, Honorable MEC Matt. The next speaker is the MEC of Free State, Honorable Bulwane. Honorable Bulwane from Free State. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Let me take this opportunity, Honorable Chair, the Chair of the NCOP, the Deputy Chair, the Minister, Deputy Ministers, MSCs of our provinces, Honorable Chair of the NCOP, the President of SALGA, the Secretary, the Support Staff, the Support Staff, ladies and gentlemen, Without waste of time, I will just show the presentation. The department. Most your is disabled. You must enable us. screen eight minutes and what is happening? Your eight minutes. I'm waiting for the host to accept my presentation, Chair. The person, where is this member sitting? The host must accept my, my presentation. It's going to be accepted. You can continue in the meantime because you do it's not good it. for the free state, really. Okay. The department <laughs> is complying with regulation that? related to the Disaster Management Act, and that only one third of the official. Okay, I think Honorable Mohai must come in because it's his own province. Where is this person sitting? He's sitting in some high sky there. We can't even notice where this. Order, 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 order. Honorable Mokau, order. 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 He is probably in, in, in the dairy farm. This is disturbing what we are watching. <laughs> Honorable Buluane, are you coming okay? It is a disaster. It is flying. He's sitting left. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Is it not? Yes, Chair. I'll propose that we proceed. We'll come back to Honorable Buluane. Honorable members, we'll go back to Free State. Let's proceed. 
to Houghton Province to Honorable MC Masumbi. Yes. The location was decreased by 5.8 percent equal to equitable shares allocation. Okay, this is free state. Continue. You can the continue. The department has received a budget allocation of 712 million, and then I can't go to that because of the time. All decrease to the department's fiscal allocation is 2.1 percent for 2021 financial year compared to the adjust allocation of 2019-2020. In response to COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the department has identified funds close to 51.9 million from the non-core items in the allocation of equitable share. We have stopped funds for social gathering that do not adhere to social distancing requirements in the current year. And Announced by the minister in the access of 55 applications were received nationally and 15,036 applications have thus far been approved by the national committee to the value of 500 million. In the free state province, 5,384 applications were received and 389 applications have thus far been approved by the national committee to the value of 17.2 million. A proof of support was also granted to the 21 proactive land acquisition form, farms to the value of 94 million. And those are the farms in terms of the, 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 the regions. We are in the process of reviewing the unsuccessful application approval under the COVID-19 disaster scheme. And up to date, we have identified 3,300 applications in our province. Several outreaches were conducted to the farming community where hand sanitizers, masks, food parcels were issued and awareness was conducted under the community members regarding the COVID-19. For the 2018, we have registered 17.1% of households involved in agricultural activity compared to the 16.9% in 2017 and increased by 0.2%. For the financial year 2021, we have identified receipts of 117 million point one under CASPA condition, conditional grant, of which after reprioritizing due to COVID-19, the reverse allocation for CASP has moved to 143 million. With this allocation, we are planning to implement 31 programs, projects and eight programs. We will create 584 jobs, benefit 1,082 benefit, 1,242 farmers will be supported, and then women, youth, and people with disability will benefit, as you can look in those colors that I've painted. From the Ilima conditional grant, the initial one was 68, the allocation now after the readjustment is 51. We are planning to implement 37 project and five programs. That's how we are going to create 309 jobs, permanent and non-permanent benefits, 26,122 beneficiary support, 11,503. I think the figures are clear on the screen for land care, and EPWP have received 8.3 million and 2 million respectively. With this allocation, we are planning to implement 12 projects and one program. We'll create 128 jobs, benefit 949 beneficiaries. Our closing remarks, Chair, our project and programs are structured to contribute to the challenges and opportunity we are confronted with. The economic and socioeconomic effect of COVID-19 pandemic is largely felt by the rural and farming community and in response to COVID-19 crisis will reduce poverty and inequality, particularly to the vulnerable groups. Among others, the negative impact felt by this rural vulnerable group is a lack of access to water, which is 
is their constitutional rights in terms of chapter two of the constitution of South Africa. That says every, everyone has a right to have access to sufficient food and water, of which the purpose of this act is to provide for the right to basic water supply and basic sanitation services. On the basis of that, I have written a letter to the Honorable Minister, Dr. Lindwes Sisulu of Human Settlement, Water and Sanitation, requesting an assistance to drill and develop borehole for farmers, especially targeting communal farms and to enhance borehole already drilled by the state, targeting communal and smallholder farming. Our municipality are struggling to transport water on a daily basis to uh, nearby farms. The department has supported our farming communities farm dwellers with sanitizers and face masks. We are working closely with the other departments such as the DIA Social Development to explore our opportunities towards COVID-19 that will benefit our farmers. I'm also constant contact with organized agricultural sector, the Free State Agricultural Union, AFASA, and the industries, big industries like Itau milling plant, and Sparta and other food processing plant and factories, factories and project. I'm continuously visiting farms to get the first hand information from our farmers and farm workers about the impact of COVID-19. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Buluane. As I'm reliably informed that uh, Houghton is still in the chamber voting Let's get straight to Guazulu Natal, which will be Honorable MEC Itole Moloi. Guazulu Natal, Honorable MEC Itole Moloi. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. Greetings uh, to the chairperson of the NCOP, Honorable Masondo, Deputy Chair. Chief um, Whip of the NCOP, Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development and her deputies, Chairperson and members of the Portfolio Committee, members of the Provincial Executive Councils, Special Delegates, uh, President um, of SALGA, Honorable uh, members present. Uh, thank you for the opportunity as we know that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic unfolds rapidly in South Africa. Uh, people in, in Guazulu Natal are adapting to a new reality and the magnitude of the impact that this pandemic has, has on them and their livelihood. Now that we are on alert level two, as, the, as announced by His Excellency, the President Ramaphosa, that all restriction on inter-provincial travel will be lifted. Accommodation, hospitality of, uh, venues and tours will be permitted accordingly to provide, to, to approve the protocol to ensure social distancing. Restaurant bars and, and taverns will be permitted to operate accordingly, uh, according to the approved um, uh, protocols. Honorable uh, House Chair, the masses of our people's uh, social conditions are not getting better because of the rising unemployment, poverty, and hunger, and therefore cannot wait any longer for us to turn the tide. The whole country is depending on the agricultural sector to ensure that there is sufficient food to feed the nation and create and creation of employment opportunities. The economic crisis present, presented by COVID-19 means more people have joined the millions of hunger, uh, and unemployed employment. With recent statistics by the International Monitoring Fund uh, indicate that, I quote and unquote, South Africa's unemployment rate is forecast to, to be 35.3% in December 2020. Honorable House Chair and members, uh, the sector has the opportunity to exercise its potential to create unemployment employment opportunities with the beginning of the planting season this year in October. Generally, COVID-19 has an impact in the overall agricultural sector, demand side in South Africa and abroad, with a ripple effect on food prices and agricultural markets. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has created uncertainty and disruption of economic growth. In addition, food distribution channels have experienced disruption from transportation interruption and quarantine measures, which has caused an impact on stable commodities. In dealing with the effect of COVID-19 amongst those that are vulnerable in our society, we have prioritized the budget so that we are focused, our focus are more on food security. This prioritization sees our intervention in food security increasing from the current allocation of 10.7 million to 40 million. As a province during the tough times presented by COVID-19, we have taken an initiative to support social relief grant by collaborating with the Department of Human Settlement and Department of Education to promote one home, one garden, vegetables and fruit trees, and for school gardens as, long, as a long-term solution for food security respectively. Finding ways of scaling up organic uh, and conservation farming programs as part of our urban agricultural concept and promotion of food security within the urban and peri-urban areas of our province. Furthermore, I have, to, I have also directed our, our staff to also pilot the project in the, in, the, in the township in all our local municipalities. Honorable House Chair and the members, uh, the province of Kwazulu we have taken the following step to ensure that the sustainability of food production. Following the pronouncement by the Minister of Agriculture and Land Reform and Rural Development to support smallholder farmers through COVID-19 relief scheme, the response from, from farmers far exceeded expectation. However, a significant number of our applicants were disqualified owing to non-compliance with the stipulation criteria. I wish to present that uh, we had application of about 4,736 and also women that um, uh, uh, were able to benefit were 1,222. The young people that uh, were benefited were 517. With the commodity prioritized for support, we're including poultry, livestock, fruit, winter uh, field crops, and vegetables. Furthermore, government through the National Department distribution over 40,000 personal protective uh, equipment in a form of mask for farmers, farm workers, and true farmers union in the province. Honorable members, farm workers and dwellers have emerged as one of the social cluster that is hard in, hardest hit by the famine during this COVID-19 lockdown. Due to that, uh, the number has increased because they have no income at the moment, which has resulted in dire shortage of nutrition in their diet. This pro pro prompted the government of KwaZulu-Natal to intervene by forming a private-public partnership with African Farmers Association of South Africa, which resulted in the 70 beasts slaughtered in, in an effort to ease famine by boosting their protein intake. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the, the other extended a helping hand also to assist two communities uh, under Amakosi in Umkanyagute, uh, where we distributed about 400 vouchers, uh, which were issued uh, to those needy families in, in the value of 500 each. To ensure the safety of our employees at, at Ada and DART, we provided PPEs, for all staff members to keep the spread of COVID-19 virus. Uh, Honorable House Chair and members, I'm glad to report that uh, also we have, uh, during the lockdown period, uh, our laboratory was also uh, utilized uh, to produce the, the sanitizers as we are normally doing uh, when we are doing work with the veterinary uh, section of our, our department when we, we, we assist with the help, uh, the uh, injection or the, 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 the cap of uh, rabbits and other diseases that uh, uh, befall our, our, our animals. 
we, were, we have uh, produced about 20,000 hand sanitizers in 250 mil, uh, mils containers, and we're also distributing for all departments of our, our province as a contribution and also as a, as a partnership that we are doing. And also we are, we are, we are also giving uh, those sanitizers to the farm workers and farmers uh, uh, in, the, in the province uh, as, as it's our responsibility. Honorable House members, uh, 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 Chair and members, our department was also indicted with the request for traditional healers and herbalists for us to test the medical and nutritional protein uh, properties of the indigenous plants. We have since established a program called Mazibuye Masisweni, which applies modern scientific tool to enhance indigenous knowledge and preserve our heritage. The Prima of KwaZulu Natal unveiled a new departmental mission to reposition the analytic laboratory as a center of excellence and innovation, where indigenous traditional healing methods and African medicine that is offered as a possible solution to many opportunities, opportunistic disease can be tested. This we are doing in partnership with various stakeholders in our community. The department also is in the drive to revive indigenous knowledge through the program, propagation of plants that grows in our natural environments and have been serving humankind as a food and medicine in all cultures for generation. I believe that uh, the, the question that was asked by honorable member, uh, I try to respond to it, but I must be specific on it to say that uh, in the in the application of the relief, we receive four thousand seven hundred and thirty six uh, um, application from people uh, from our smallholders farmers. But out of that, two hundred and eighty two thousand eight hundred and thirty six was 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 responded to and uh, benefited. That's why I was doing the breakdown of the women that um, uh, uh, benefited, which is. 1,000, uh, the women is 1,222 and the youth is uh, 517. We wish to also to indicate that uh, with the, 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 the programs that we are having, we are trying to ensure that um, it goes uh, to the beneficiaries and those beneficiaries are tangible people that you can touch and see. Hence the one home, one garden, one hectare, one household. We are not just giving uh, handing out the, 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 the support. We get into individual houses and ensure that those houses are there and those people are there. And we are also relieving the, the social grants that are given by social development. As and also want to encourage a culture of working today. Uh, I wish to thank the opportunity that we have been given and also thank the department, uh, our minister and, their dep and, and head deputies for the work that we are doing and working together. We can do more. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, MEC Kotemoloi. Now let me invite Lipopo, Honorable MEC Ndalane. Honorable Ndalane. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson of the NSOP, uh, Mr. Amos Masondo in absentia. The Honorable Deputy Chairperson of the NSOP, Ms. Mary Sylvia Lucas in absentia. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Metoko Didiza. Honorable House Chairperson of Committees and Oversight, Mr. A.G. Nyambi. Uh, fellow MECs, Salga Representative, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in Limpopo has welcomed the announcement of uh, alert level two of COVID-19 restriction. The easing of restriction in many areas of economic sectors will positively influence increased levels of activity in our area of work. We must, however, say from the outset that agriculture and food supply service have been categorized as essential services. Consequently, most activities with, within food production value chain continue to function during the lockdown. It is important to indicate though that the lockdown restriction resulted in unintended consequences. 
to mention but a few at production level crop productivity especially cash crop was affected by lack of access to input with restaurant and hospitality industry closed their produce targeted for this market was greatly affected producers suffered most harvest losses restriction on informal trading also affected fresh produce how hawkers market for farmers challenges in securing alternative markets so perishable produce losing shelf life and going into waste restriction on the live stock auction during early stage of the lockdown so farmers struggling to get expected sales in agro logistics restriction in interprovincial movement of truck trucks affected transportation of produce to market honorable chairperson in mitigation the impact the province welcome the 1.2 billion covid-19 agricultural disaster support fund to support smallholders and communal farmers from the national department of agriculture land reform and rural development we mobilize our farmers to apply as a result limpopo registered at 7066 application of this application 2445 application were successful with amounted to 101 million 718 18728 rand and 31 cent as at 14 august 2020 for 40, 409 91 vouchers has been issued to 1938 of the approved application which is at 79.2% for now 2284 of the vouchers that were issued have been received by the farmers and redeemed at various import stores it is evident from the number of application at the successful ones that most of our farmers could not be covered by the national agricultural agriculture relief intervention as a result of this reality the department conducted analysis of the remaining application which identify 1494 application for further support uh this were application within the score of four following the same criteria an amount of uh, 57.5 million received from the adjust, adjustment budget was used to support these farmers on the same produ production input as outlined at in various commodities Honorable Chairperson, the department has further plan to assist farmers and household to to recover recover from the impact of COVID-19 in the 2020-2021 annual performance plan. We plan to support a 5,300 household on various food security initiatives, 11,128 producers on various input. and mechanization services support to plow 7 7200 hectares for food production we are hopeful that this mitigation factors will help our farmers and household to recover from the the devastating impact imposed by covid-19 restriction we applaud our farmers and farm workers who work throughout restriction in order to ensure that food security is realized at no stage we have been threatened by the short shortage of food during the lockdown period we will continue to support our farmers and our household for a poverty free society i thank you honorable chairperson thank you honorable ms ndalane i can confirm that uh, the chairperson of the house is with us it's only the deputy chair that went to attend the funeral honorable masondo is part of us is taking notes thank you honorable dalane 
I now invite Mpumalanga, MC Shongwe, Ndimanzi. Ndimanzi. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, let me take this opportunity <laughs> and formally greet the Chairperson uh, and uh, the members of the NCOP and all the leadership in the NCOP administratively and otherwise my colleagues uh, from different provinces as well as your Salka and everyone else, your minister, deputy ministers and everyone who is here on this uh, meeting uh, today, uh, Chairperson, let me not waste time and say all of uh, protocol observed. Uh, Chair, the presentation from Pumalanga is going to cover issues that are of an impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on agricultural sector and the broad uh, response plan by my department. Uh, it is very much important, uh, Chairperson, to say that uh, there are job losses due to the escalated down operation on farms due to lockdown related uh, restrictions. And the impact thereof, Chairperson, the agricultural sector suffered an unintended consequences of social, of uh, scaled down operations due to the related restriction of the lockdown, such as uh, social distancing, limited public and uh, limited uh, public uh, transportation, as well as uh, limitations on the on the provincial and regional borders. Uh, Jefferson, uh, the most uh, heavily affected farms are those that are dependent uh, on arsenal versus uh, migrant uh, labor or sales, notably fruit and vegetable production, horticulture and garden uh, nurseries. Uh, Jefferson, uh, the hospitality industry is in one of the main markets for the agricultural products and since it was uh, closed uh, many farmers could not uh, sell their pro produce and had to shed some of the jobs the uh, scale down had much impact on farm uh, solvency for all levels of the farming community including both crop and animal production farmers the broad plan, Chairperson, is that the department will in both the uh, short and long term focus on assisting farmers uh, to increase their production levels, in particular by doing the following upscale and broaden the implementation uh, of the Zonda Indala program, which we, in short, we call it ZIP, that ensures that uh, every household plants some every household plant some kind of a fruit or a nut or a tree for that matter Jefferson. this is one of the innovation programs that the Mpumalanga agricultural sector devised uh, to respond to increase in food security and directly and indirectly improve on the carbon front uh, uh, print uh, through this program, uh, many more households will actively take part in the value chain processes like fruit drying and jamming, drying and the mango archer uh, processing. The upscale, uh, we are going to upscale the production of grains from 12,000 hectares to 35,000 hectares per year. This will be made possible through collaboration with Commodity Association, increased mechanism farmers, and introduction of seed multiplication initiatives, which will assist to avail more seeds to farmers to cover more land. Uh, honorable Chairperson and members, uh, the focus on increasing vegetable production level at an emerging uh, compensate for the increase and in, uh, shortage of such at local retail markets. 
for the short term, uh, the department has planned on providing uh, six vegetable projects with uh, a support of farm infrastructure and production inputs. The support we include in particular provision of boreholes, fencing, uh, drip irrigation, and vegetable tunnels. Uh, produce, I mean, uh, produce, uh, produce from, and these projects we also form part on the government-based support school nutrition program, uh, Chairperson. The government, which I, we are leading in the Mpumalanga, uh, is going to contribute in increasing access to affordability and quality of fresh produce to the schools as well. Uh, Chairperson and members, the department will resume the NSF funded learner ships where 420 young farmers will benefit uh, from the training as well as a, as a stipend. Uh, in the short term, we will contribute to their livelihood and long term, their application of their acquired skills upscale their agricultural activities. Uh, we are also going to expand the animal production develop meant uh, through MESP and as well as corroboration with the ARC on the Kaunofazo Yadihomo, which is KYDN in brackets, which is a cattle production improvement program. The department uh, is working on cattle breeding on the research farms and some of the farms that have been uh, placed under the Fortune 40 program or project to support cattle farmers with the quality livestock is one matter that is uh, assisting us uh, in this province. Chairperson, to accelerate uh, in the medium and long term, allocation of land to farmers uh, will bring identified hectares of a state land and allocated it crops and livestock to farmers. This will uh, this will be done in support of and or in partnership with Amakosi on communal land, starting with the hectares identified by the House of Traditional Leaders. Focus is on expanding the production to ensure that all land that is laying fallow is turned into production units. Uh, the impact thereof uh, since uh, the COVID-19 lockdown went into effect on the 26th of March, the range of products available to households for purchase was restricted to set uh, defined essential goods and services. Many of our household found themselves unable to access the range of basic foods essentials as these were either in short supply or every expensive uh, commodities that are displayed in their different areas. The department was, and as during this uh, period, been part of the essential institution used to directly combat the effect of this pandemic on our communities, and in particular, the marginalized communities. Uh, as part of the key strategy by the province to respond to the impact, the department was, and, and then the department was provided with the additional funding for COVID-19 of about uh, 32 million to purchase and distribute food parcels guided by the Department of Social, Social Development uh, in the province. Uh, Chairperson, the department noted that many more households have turned towards producing some vegetables to augment their basic food needs. This has led to an increase of a household's access to vegetable seeds and 
or siblings. Significantly increase was also noted in the need of support by the department from the households that have been ad adversely affected and impacted by the pandemic. Chairperson, the department has thus planned to increase implementation initiative of food gardens and establishment and the support to combat hunger, which is a, 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 which is a sustainable way of food security as compared to provision of food parcels. Chairperson, for the short and medium term, the department has planned to focus on ensuring that 487 households are supported. Uh, these households will be provided with the support to establish and or maintain their food, uh, food gardens. The support will be in a form of amongst others, agricultural technical advice, production inputs and starter packs mentorship and training, and also surplus produce from this household will also As you conclude, be considered. As I conclude, the uh, Chairperson, I want to take this opportunity to say that I've, I've listened to honorable members uh, that are coming from Pumalanga who raise issues that are in our province we will be engaging or giving them a necessary written responses in so far as those matters so that we are able to be detailed, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And with those words, I want to thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mdimanze VR. The next speaker is the MEC of Northern Cape, Honorable Manopule. Honorable Manopule. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable House Chair. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I acknowledge the, um, the Chairperson, um, the Chief Whip, um, and the Deputy Ministers, and permanent and special delegates, MCs, uh, Representative of Sanga. Good day to all. Um, as the Northern Cape Provincial Government, we have no doubt whatever that our efforts as a country in terms of implementing the recommended strategy to flatten the curve and showing and is showing slowing down the rate of transmission as well as is on track and bearing positive fruits. On COVID-19 has forced us to reprioritize our system the way we used to do government business and provide services to people. While we are in a women's month, it is prudent for us to find a way how we elevate women, farmers, uh, workers, um, dwell, uh, farm dwellers as well. There are issues in this difficult time of COVID-19, as well as the impact of the gender-based violence in all the women in the sector. I dedicate this uh, uh, briefing uh, to, to them, and as well as the grand family who were kidnapped and brutally killed in Mahoko, in one of the farms in our province. We condemn the farm killings in our province. We all want to say their soul rest in peace to all who have been killed. All the women in the sector, we, we strive to transform the sector to be inclusive, especially for women. Let's be part of the generation that ends gender inequality. The Northern Cape is crippling the effects of the drought it has been described as the worst ever in our history. This has meant that agricultural sector has been greatly affected. The, the, the agricultural sector and the farming um, in particular is very, uh, in its very nature, is a risky. The decision that they are taking on the regular basis cannot be predicted to be 100% certain. The, this includes weather, price situation, and changing market amongst others. However, the risk that have never been anticipated is factored into the risk that of the health risk that we are confronted with in this country and in the world. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic in our province has already in, in the struggling in the already struggling food insecurity, joblessness, and employment, which has also 
has meant to some of our farmers have to be able to have not access to international market due to lock, lockdown restriction. Crop and life performance depends on biological processing that we are affected by the, by the weather, the pest and the diseases. The low uh, rainfall or drought may lead to low yields. Hail or heavy rains could damage even wipe our crops in, our, in other instances. Health pandemics has shown that as an exogenous factor, it has affected our, uh, our sector greatly. And when coming to actual, um, actual production, Northern Cape is characterized by a very diverse actual sector with two distinct branches, which is an extensive life production, livestock production and intensive crop production under irrigation. The risk management that we have to employ in our province the mitigation strategy implemented to date is trying to, uh, to mitigate the risk posed by the COVID-19 include the national uh, department, which uh, was aside, set aside 1.2 billion. The COVID uh, relief uh, disaster and that was targeted uh, uh, for smallholder and commercial farmers to, to support for food security initiative. About uh, 857 applications from the province were received and then 1,427 applications were approved to, to offer assistance to farmers with production inputs and support production in country uh, uh, in our country with a value of, of 46 million. The commodities which were identified to, a support, to support this, uh, our, small, uh, our support smallholder farmers are poultry, vegetables, fruits, and livestock. Uh, those are the crops that were, the commodities that were identified in our province. Out of this uh, application that we approved of 1,427, uh, uh, 1, uh, we should approve about 240 were women, 140 were youth, 19 were people with disability, and then 1,028 were men. Uh, that's a breakdown of those who are up, the applicant of the of the COVID relief. The livestock cat, uh, category has been the most requested commodity by by our farmers, followed the poultry and the vegetables. Each of the approved farmers have received inputs in line with the uh, size of the farm's operation up to the maximum of fifty million, fifty thousand. I beg your pardon. The high number of the application forms were collected in one of our districts, which is John Talahaitsewe, which is the one who they have submitted most uh, uh, submissions, 4,174, followed by Namakwa, 1,705, and uh, ZFM recorded 1,675 application, Francis Bart, 1,123. Lastly, Pixlika CM recording 483 submission. Out of all the regions, um, Namakwa received the uh, highest number of approvals of the total 689, followed by Big Slick which is 220. The ZFM uh, 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 region got approval of 203 applications, and John Taula Heights received 169. The least one, it was Francis Bart, with 154. That was approved. The farmers appreciated the relief and looking forward, and as the minister have indicated earlier when she presented the process of the appeal, and so uh, for, for those who might, could have not been reached uh, uh, the, 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 the time of during the lockdown. But it does not uh, mean that we will not be able to provide the support. We have to ensure that we provide support within the constraint of the budget that has been presented to us. Honorable uh, House Chairperson, further note that uh, more the department personnel as part of the technical response team to provide technical assistance for COVID-19 intervention in all the district. Technical assistance was also provided to, in, to in existing projects, construction and continuing for some of the projects. Several meetings were conducted in, 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 in discussion with the private sector. Those discussions are still underway by trying to explore ways of processing and transporting food for animals uh, to our farmers. The department also utilized four local radio stations in order to make presentation for primary animal health care. 
uh, to our local farming community in a form of continuous support that we are providing to them. With regards to the provision of the P uh, PPEs, uh, we distributed PPEs to the farm workers to all five districts. Um, I'll just give the total that was uh, distributed is 40,450 uh, masks and then 30,456 uh, uh, soaps for, for all our, our um, uh, farm workers in our district, as well as uh, our workers uh, in our district office in the provincial office. We still were continuing with the program of distributing masks and, and soaps to, to the farm worker con, uh, uh, program that we are continuing. The mitigation strategy that we are in, going to employ um, in our province, department will, con, will train and capacitate more farmers uh, on financial and marketing issues. And uh, intensify, intensify the production of, uh, of the irrigation and adoption of the technologies. Capacitate small sector, small holder sector through targeted uh, support of the extension and advisory services. Increase export market access opportunities to, to, to them while we prepare for the time that we, uh, the, the, the borders will be open. And expand production area whenever there is a room for expansion. Encourage consumption of the local produce uh, and improve the image of the sector by attracting uh, young, young, uh, young people. In our province, we have um, aging farmers. We, about 80% are um, older um, people. Una. That's why it's important that we have developed a strategy how to, to attract young people to our sector uh, because the sector is very important in our province. The second uh, uh, sector that is uh, creating job opportunities in our province. Uh, as I conclude, Chairperson, Chair Chair the, the persistent budget cuts to, to the province, both in terms of equitable share, conditional grants, has therefore meant that we are unable to make the requisite, the requisite intervention to assist the sector, in particular, emerging and smallholder farmers. However, the department is working very hard to, to be creative and navigate through in this difficult epoch we find ourselves in. We should not fail provide support to our farmers in order to ensure that we achieve the strategic goal of our government by transforming the sector, which will be inclusive to women and youth and disability. Chairperson, with that, we are saying to all of us, we, we dare not fail our sector. And thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Manopole, Honorable Members. I can confirm that it's a fresh product of the National Council of Provinces from the previous term. Honorable, she was part of the Ensukika. It's Northwest. Honorable Mohono. Honorable Mohono from Northwest. Thank you very much, House Chair. Chairperson of the NCOP, the Deputy Chairperson of the NCOP, the Chief Whip. Members of the NCOP, Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Minister, my colleagues from different provinces, and Honorable uh, Member that I would have forgotten, uh, the President of Salga, Special Delegate to, to NCOP. Chair, thank you very much for the opportunity availed to us as a province, Northwest as a province, on the announcement of the arrival of COVID-19, it finds Northwest struggling with the statistic from Stat SA that in the Northwest, over a million people are living below the poverty line. And the department had to see to it that they come up with measures that will assist in ensuring how best do we reduce our people living below poverty line. As a result, hence, we then started saying, we should do things differently. It can be that we use the same approach and want to get different solutions. We came up with a food and nutrition security strategic plan that will ensure that it covers a number of departments within government to ensure that we work together. You would know that the Department of Social Development is the one responsible mostly for food parcel and identifying indigenous family. We work with it. One of the questions that was raised earlier is that 
as government of the Northwest, what are we doing to work with the farmers? And also, are we working with school years? As the government of the Northwest, we are strongly working with farmers in the province. That is why during COVID-19, it was easy to work. Even during the, 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 the COVID-19 intervention, it was easy to reach our farmers because we even have a WhatsApp group of farmers and the department so that when there are issues faced by the farmers, we easily pick it up on the WhatsApp group and we are able to attend to it. As the province of the Northwest chair, we strongly condemn the killing of the, farm, of the farmers and the brutality on farm workers. During the early uh, uh, months of COVID-19, I received consistent calls where some farm workers were refusing workers to go and access their medication in the clinics. And I condemn that strongly working with the Department of Labor to ensure that our farm workers are not suffocating in those farms. So it hasn't been an easy task, but we managed working together with, with, with other departments in ensuring that we assist our, our farmers and our farm, our farm workers. Drought didn't spare the Northwest as a province. We were also hit hearted as the Northwest in terms of, of drought. And we then applied to, to, to COCTA to assist the province. We have since uh, get 8 million that will be using for drought in one of our, 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 our municipalities, because most of our animals there, there is no water. We'll be using that money for boreholes. The process is underway in ensuring that in no time we are able to ensure that the farmers in that part of the province are able to access water as, as farmers. They don't have to struggle and, and, and their cattle ended up, up dying. Chair, Northwest is divided into four districts and every district have got its specialization. Among other things, why we want to do things differently. We don't want a Northwest to be a general dealer where we don't have our focus commodities. We want the province to have its focus commodities. You can have other commodities, but we want focus commodities of the Northwest that you know when you want this, you get it from the Northwest. So every district have got its own specialization your Bujanana, that's where you get your horticulture and poultry mostly, and a bit of uh, other commodities that you'll find then. When you go to Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, mostly you'll get piggery and poultry. Yes, other commodities are, are, are there, uh, horticulture there and there. When you go to Naga Mulema, is the maize triangle. That's where you get a lot of maize and your sunflower. And when you go to Dr. Rusi Homuti Mumpati, that's where you get Texas of South Africa where you get the best cattle that you can get uh, in, in that district, but they still do other commodities of, of agriculture. So we said we must be well focused to ensure that we give our farmers the best. They are able to compete even in the, in the outside market of, of outside, outside these countries. Yes, indeed, as the, as the province, we were also able to participate in issues of distributing PPE to our farmers. Uh, because when we started, it was very hectic and we had to ensure that every farmer in the province is protected because if the agricultural market can be hit hearted by COVID-19, there won't be production of food and that will cause a problem. As a result, we came in also as the Northwest government. We distributed about 43,750 surgical masks and we also distributed hygiene so about 44000 uh, we still to, to distribute more because we up to now out of the 44000 we we have distributed about 21 we have distributed about 21600 and we also distributed cloth masks to 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 our farmers so it 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 it, it, it we also when we go and distribute we were also giving education because we are also working with the Department of Health. In contributing to what COVID-19, as the Department of Agriculture in the Northwest, we handed over five of our mobile veterinary trucks to health so that it can help health in terms of your, your testing and your screening. So five of our veterinary clinics have been uh, given to, to Department of Health to ensure that uh, they, they are assisted in running a, 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 a COVID-19 programs. Also, we were also part of the COVID-19 relief fund as the Northwest. All in all, 
about 8,720 farmers applied. Chair, I can assure you, we, we didn't sleep. As, as, as agriculture, from level five, we have always been on the ground. And I was saying God is good because we are the people who have and could have contracted COVID because we were on the ground every day without fail. So we, we were on, 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 on public media, we were on the ground encouraging our farmers to apply. Traditional uh, leaders were hand, uh, uh, handy in ensuring that where there's a need for a letter from a traditional authority in terms of lease of the land, they were available at, at, at all times. So about 8,720 applied, but only 3,153 were able to be approved. But the sad story is that, Chair, the minister raised the matter. From the Northwest, we picked about 83 public servants who applied and they were approved. But we since have made sure that after we verify them with the system, none of them was offered any voucher because those vouchers must go back to the farmers. And in minus in the 83,000, we were left with uh, 2,900 uh, Farmers, farmers Plus to ensure that uh, uh, they access the COVID-19 relief fund. Chair, I can assure you that uh, I'm pleased up to this far on what the fund is doing because uh, I visited these farmers. Yesterday, I was in one project uh, in, in, in Okni, Kanana. These are some of the, the, the women that were assisted by this. I was impressed with the work they are doing on the ground. They are producing, they've got market, and they, they appreciated a lot the support that they got from, 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 from government. Like I said, Chair, that we came up with the food and nutrition security strategy plan on how do we mitigate the impact of poverty that we find ourselves in as, as a province. We then came up with food security teams in each and every, every district of the province. In the Northwest, we've got two colleges of agriculture, top notch. And I can assure you, Chair, the, 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 the learners we are producing in our college, they are immediately absorbed by the market. On top of that, we have our research farms as a province. One of the, we've got about five. One of the research farm is in Mafiken called Kora. What we are doing in that farm is to massify the production of food security package. Our food security package is the one that's trying to sustain the life of the people. Social development will come in, give people food parcels. It's not sustainable. But as agriculture- As you conclude, MEC. <laughs> I've got a lot to give. Eight minutes is too I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so I know. so all right, as I conclude, Chair, our food security package include our goals, people giving goals, giving layer chickens, giving broiler, indigenous chicken, but all these things we are doing them from our farm to mitigate even the cost within the, because government have got no money, but the little that we have, we must ensure that we massify it and, and help our community. Chair, there's a lot that I want to share. There's a lot that we are doing, but I can assure you that agriculture is working and schools that are offering agriculture in the province, we are working with them because we are recruiting from them into our colleges. Our farmers, we are working together every day without fail. And, and they know, they have my number. They call me any time of the day. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Chair. Uh, I wish to share more. There's a lot in front of me that I want to share, but unfortunately time is on our side and, and, and that uh, we'll continue to share with honorable members in ensuring that we brief them on what is it that we are doing in our province on a daily basis. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable MC Mohono. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Western Cape Honorable Mayor. Honorable Mayor. Viva. Okay, can you see the presentation? Hello, Chair, can you uh, see the presentation? Not yet, not yet. Okay. But you can you can continue, it will okay. get you along. Oh, yes. okay. I can see you. Okay, thank you, Chair. I think, uh, firstly, uh, good day to the Minister, uh, my fellow uh, MECs, members of the NGOP and colleagues here in this uh, platform. Uh, firstly, during a, a crisis, one needs to have a focus, and our focus is very clear here in the Western Cape in terms of key priorities. Our first priority is structured education, training, and research. For us, this is very important. During COVID-19, we kept 
also our colleagues, we migrated to a digital platform for the learning, especially for the third year uh, students so that they can also study. We continued with the research. Secondly, for me, very important is the issue of rural safety. Safety for me is of critical importance, not only in the Western Cape, but in South Africa. My heart bleeds every time when I hear a farmer is being killed. And so rural safety should be our number one priority, given the fact that 50% of all South Africa's agricultural exports from South Africa goes on the African continent. And so this is also important from a perspective of rural safety, uh, also from a food security on the African continent. My third objective is market access, given the fact that 45% of all South Africa's uh, agricultural uh, export comes from the Western Cape. Market access is of critical importance and also farmer support and also dealing with the issues of climate change as we proceed during the uh, pandemic of uh, the global pandemic. Uh, sir, we have uh, seen also a number of bottlenecks uh, as what we call disruptors during COVID-19 for agriculture. Firstly, it was bottleneck at the harbor due to the closure of the port, the disruption of air traffic, the uh, importing countries prioritizing goods, farm efficiencies abroad, disruption of domestic value chains. We have seen social unrest, on-farm outbreaks of COVID-19, inability to also import key inputs, particularly uh, uh, technology input for the agricultural sector. There was also a lockdown, diversion of production, and generally inefficiencies in input and supply chains. Uh, sir, we have also seen the impact of COVID-19, particularly as it relates to short-term shortage of goods on domestic markets. We've also seen long-term shortage of goods on domestic markets. And as all the MECs have indicated, food insecurity in vulnerable communities. We've also seen a wasting of fresh produce, also a loss of market share abroad. This is very sad, particularly for the wine industry. We've also seen a shortage of farming inputs and also some of the failing farms. What has my department done during COVID-19? We've procured 100,000 cloth masks for agri-workers. We have also issued permits to farmers in terms of regulations. I have also developed a frequently asked questions for the sector to gu guide producers and the agriculture sector. And this frequently asked questions for the agricultural sector is also translated in the three official languages of the Western Cape and is also online. We have also written numerous representations to Minister Didiza in terms of the revision for the regulations, particularly in the wine industry, the export industry, the flower subsector, as well as the repatriation of seasonal workers, which MEC Meth of the Eastern Cape has also referred to, and I want to thank her also for her support. Also, the issue of uh, simplified communication material, because we don't, we know that people don't often read regulatory and government language stuff. So we've put all that stuff in the infographic so that it's much more easily to understand for the whole sector. And we've also translated all the communication material in the three official languages of the Western Cape. We have also made provision for the distribution of the face masks to uh, farmers. And in addition, we have developed with the Eastern Cape the protocol for the movement of essential workers who work seasonally on farms and then have to return uh, to the neighboring uh, regions or neighboring provinces. We conducted weekly virtual meetings with the agricultural stakeholders. We've also established a network of communicators with the, in the sector to create an awareness for everybody in the Western Cape that communicate on agriculture. There's an agricultural communication network so that we communicate consistently the same message. We've also made provision for hand sanitizers and we have also made sure that our veterinary export certification office in Milton is open to provide safe food that adheres to the local importing standards. This is important because this is a 5 billion rand export agricultural value to the Western Cape. Uh, we have also uh, developed a hotspot and uh, with the mayors here in the Western Cape, I've also chairing the uh, interministerial committee on the faith-based organizations. What we have decided is that the faith-based organization mustn't run around and find out what is facts and what is fake news. I meet with them on a Friday evening to share with them all the work that is currently being done about COVID-19, not only in agriculture, but in the whole of the Western Cape government. Also, we have also made alternative interventions to ensure that there's a continuation of the educational programs at Altsenburg. And so we have created a platform, a learning digital platform for them to continue to study. 
We have also continued to monitor the hygiene and management of abattoirs, particularly also at the border post at Puyulstrf, where we inspected the consignments en route to the Western Cape. In addition, we compiled a list of all the disaster relief funds to the sector to assist the affected farmers. We have also partnered with the STEL regarding the distribution of alcohol sanitizers. The STEL has uh, repurposed the winery and they produce instead of wine, alcohol sanitizers, and we are very thankful for the work of the STEL. In addition, throughout the country, MPO, the milk producing organization, they have also, we have partnered with them to donate milk to various communities. Uh, and I'm very thankful for the work that they have been doing. In addition, we are now busy with the planning of a post-COVID-19 provincial agricultural recovery plan because we are not looking in, we're looking not out, we're looking beyond COVID-19. What we have done successfully in the Western Cape, we adopted what we call a whole of government approach, a whole of society approach. And I've also been tasked to, with a specific tech. Uh, this is the Cape Winelands. And I'm happy that I put, they have put me there because the Cape Winelands is the biggest soft fruit industry south of the equator. And I'm particularly happy for the work that we are doing in managing COVID-19 in this area. In addition, we are launching the One Home, One Garden initiative as a response to food insecurity. My fellow MECs have referred to this. And uh, we are now moving from food relief to food security through the One Home, One Garden project. And we are particularly happy that we were able to partner with the various communities uh, throughout the country. And we are thankful for the many people that have supported us. From a household perspective, we have planned 800 uh, community household gardens. Up to now, we have delivered 1,400 gardens. And we are particularly happy for the work that we have been doing in the work areas. And we want to see a revolution in community food gardens in the Western Cape. And so I'm particularly pleased that people and the community are now taking ownership. I want to thank and express my deep thanks for the citrus farmers uh, here in the Western Cape. We know that in South Africa, we are, South Africa is the second biggest uh, citrus producers in the world. We know Lampopo is the biggest in South Africa. And we also know that we are the ninth biggest citrus export in the world, South Africa that is per volume. And so they have also donated uh, fruit throughout the Western Cape is great for COVID-19, vitamin C. In addition, the Western Cape cabinet uh, took a resolution that the HOD for agriculture in the Western Cape and the MEC for agriculture take responsibility for the management of COVID-19 in the Cape Winelands. And there we do six things. We do testing and treatment, quarantine and isolation, civil compliance, slowing the spread, humanitarian relief and food security and economic recovery. And I'm pleased to say to date, we have a 90% recovery rate for COVID-19 in this particular area, and I'm particularly happy. Well, there's still a lot of work that we need to do in terms of a long-term perspective, but for us, it is very important that we gear and the policy processes and look into the future in terms of agriculture. So from a long-term perspective, for me, rural safety is important. Market access is important. Farmer support during this period and beyond this period Climate change, education, and research is very, very important. And my HOD has now developed a clear implementation plan with the real targets to move beyond COVID-19. Well, we have seen that as a result of our joint work, and we want to thank uh, Dr. Mikese, who also came to my area in the Cape Winelands for their support. And we have seen great significant progress from a hotspot now. We are now the fastest growing area in terms of reducing the spread of COVID-19 in this particular area. Chair, uh, thank you. And there were some questions that I've seen in the presentation to the national minister. I'm quite happy to take those questions uh, offline, but I want to uh, thank you and the NCOP for this great opportunity. Thank you, Honorable uh, MEC. Thank you, thank you very much. The next speaker, it's a Salga representative Councillor Malachi. Councillor Malachi. Let's move, Chair. Okay. Chairperson. Chair. Councillor Mal Malachi is not in. Honorable Moka Chairperson. Yes. Chairperson, I've got a proposal. Is posting questions in the chat group. 
Can the relevant MECs please don't ignore us? Respond to our question, especially the MEC that you just applauded now, and uh, you know, bowing your your head too. But this Manu is not a point of order, please. No, no, but I'm raising. I'm raising. No, there's nothing like this. How do you anticipate, honorable member? You are undermining the decorum of the house. Oh, yeah. No, this is unfair. Order we cannot members. be subjected to this kind of treatment. This is unfair. Members, I am acknowledging and praising all the relevant MECs from all the provinces, and there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, now, yeah. let me take this opportunity to thank all the relevant um, MECs for availing themselves. Now we are getting to session three, Tate Masondo, who's the chairperson okay. of the National Council of Provinces, chairperson. will be leading that session. Chairperson, chairperson. Yes. Okay. It's Councillor Malach. Yes, it's uh, Salga. I had a glitch with the network, but I'm, I'm in chair to represent Salga. You are recognized. Otherwise, I was going to come and teach you technology <laughs> so that you don't have problems of teachers. <laughs> but you can present uh, Councillor Malachi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, um, Program Director, Honorable Nyambi. Let me appreciate and acknowledge the Honorable Minister Metidiza, Honorable Deputy Ministers, all our, all our members of the NCOP, honorable MECs, our councillors, as well as all officials present. Let me take this opportunity to confirm the outbreak of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has had a negative impact on the South African economy, and especially in the agricultural sector. The sector lost value in production and realized revenues due to lockdown restrictions on trade and general movement of goods and people. In particular, the effect of lockdown restriction was heartfelt by the downtrodden and poor who depend solely on agriculture sector for jobs, livelihood, and the life essentials. Farmers, especially the small scale and commercial establishments lost a great deal of production and revenue streams. The operations and programs of the Department on Land Reform and Rural Development were also severely affected, Honorable Chair, and slowed down. This had a dire effect on progress with regard to spatial transformation and land development objectives due to slowdown effect on land reform programs and economic development. We therefore say as municipalities, we, we, the municipalities had a direct interest on agriculture, land reform, and rural development. Land, you are confirming, is a primary asset and lever to capitalize economic development and especially rural development without access to land ownership program. Without, without um, um, access to land ownership in strategic areas, the, de the development vision of many municipalities will never materialize. The land reform program is therefore central to the municipal interest for development, resolution on land claims, acquisition of strategic pieces of land, especially the state land for developmental use in many of our municipal areas is paramount to Salga's desire to guide spatial transformation and reorganization of the apartheid special reform for the inclusive benefit of all our citizens. The devastating impact on, of COVID-19 pandemic to farmers, farm dwellers, and local economy of our rural municipalities in particular will leave a long-term effect on our planned development goals and plans. Already our municipalities have been reporting, among other, other the, on the following key challenges. The challenges that we face is increased um, incidences of land invasion.
Councillor Malachi, unmute. Unmute. Thank you. This is what we are subjected to now. Continue, Councillor Malachi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. We're confirming the challenges that we're facing, a growing risk of food security concerns, growing risk of small scale farmers defaulting on their bank loans, and thus risking job losses and disruption of essential food security networks, growing risk of insufficient re readily prepared and planned land parcels for such uses as burial and symmetry services, risk of exposure to large scale spread on inf of infections due to lack of adequate access by farm workers and poor rural households to personal protective equipment, which is essential for combating the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Shrinking of available cash flow and going concern risk due to low collection levels and non-payment of rates and services during the lockdown months. So as a as, 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 as SALGA, municipalities are at the cold phase, we confirm that our municipalities are at the cold phase of service delivery. And they've also been at the forefront to the fight to combat spread and minimize of negative impact of COVID-19 pandemic to our citizens. Upon declaration of the state of national disaster and clarion call to join forces in combating of the spread of COVID-19 virus, many of our municipalities were thrown into deep end, were thrown into deep end. They had to respond to the need to secure safety of citizens by providing and extending essential services like water, refuse, sanitation, refuse removal, sanitation, electricity, and road maintenance to citizens in vulnerable positions. This had to be given whether citizens were able to pay or not. Provide essential tools to defend citizens from, effect, from infecting each other by providing free access to PPEs, to vulnerable groups, the poor, elderly, the disabled, and other community members who reside in our spaces. This includes farm workers in some instances, especially in rural and agricultural areas. To provide and facilitate provision of additional and non-assigned emergency function and services like provision of shelters, food parcels, maintenance of rural or farm roads, and sanitation of public spaces uh, like taxi ranks. Responded to the growth, growing demand for municipal public health and environmental services to complement the work of the Department of Health. Engaging intergovernmental relation partners to mobilize resources towards the relief of stresses caused by COVID-19 pandemic to our local economics. So in particular, Salga acknowledge and appreciate the relief brought by the following relief program, but not limited to non-governmental organizations like UNDP, Solidarity Fund, and other who partnered with government at different levels to provide necessary relief packages to the vulnerable groups in peri-urban, rural farming communities, and agricultural sector in particular. These interventions have brought a great deal of hope to our municipalities and citizens at large. COVID-19 economic stimulus packages announced by the president and detailed by our various ministries, such as the 1.2 that was provided for by Honorable Minister Judiza Department, for farmers and agricultural produ production support. We therefore uh, appreciate and acknowledge the, and, and the hard work done by the department in combating the impact of COVID-19 and advancing the strategic program on agriculture, land reform, rural development as dedicated. In the minister's briefing, we note and have keen interest in further engaging In further engaging, in further engaging the department on where we can collaborate through our municipalities to take forward the pronounced developments in respect of the agriculture master plan program, 
the land allocation, the state land allocation program, the rural development strategy and land reform program. We also wish to extend our invitation to the department to join hands in the resolution of the following key challenges currently facing local government. Resolutions of the land administration system value chain challenges, resolutions on the areas of impasse currently experienced between rural municipalities, councils and additional authorities in respect of the full implementation of SPLUMA. Join, joint provision of capacity to struggling municipalities to fully realize the value and effectively implement SPLUMA. Sharing of experience and knowledge systems between municipal, local economic development functions and the department's research agencies. With that, honorable chair, I wish to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, honorable Malachi. Before I give our chairperson Tatema Sonto, let me indicate one thing that is uh, very much important, honorable members. As NCOP, from time to time, will always have SALGA and special delegates from provinces. We are not even doing them a favor. They've got a right to participate in the National Council of Provinces. At no stage, you must create an impression when we are having special delegates or SALGA that they are input are less significant compared to us. And you'll remember that after the elections, is these very same provinces that are voting to have the composition of the National Council of Provinces. And the constitution is very clear about the role of SALGA. So let's refrain and stop this thing that when we have special delegates, irrespective of a party that they are representing, that we make their participation to feel that it's in a way doing them a favor. Let me give Tate Masondo an opportunity okay, to okay, deal okay. with section three. Okay. Tate Masondo. On a point of order. Tate Masondo. On a point Tate of order, chair. Chair. Thank you very much, chair. Order, chair. Uh, on a point of order, Thank chair. You very much. On a point of order. Uh, on a point of yeah, order. Yeah, I, I see that uh, Mugaus uh, uh, very like a bit agitated. So. I'm rising uh, on a point of Mugawuse. order, chair. Let's hear you, Mugaus. Chairperson. Yes, what's your point? I'm not agitated at all, chairperson. We are not at all downplaying the the presentations done by provinces. What we are requesting is that. If provinces comes here and appear before the National Council of Provinces, let us be given a chance to also interrogate their presentation, ask questions which relate to our provinces. Why is the ANC government hiding this presentation? Because it is exactly what we want, that provinces must come and account in the National Council of Provinces, and we have answers for our constituents. Okay, well, thank you very much. So yeah. don't take offense. Well, thank you very much. Let's know that point and move on. Um, let's first appreciate uh, uh, the House Shepherdson's uh, chairing uh, that has taken us through the, the last few steps uh, of our program. And thank the provinces and the Salga uh, for their valuable input. Uh, we will now move up, over to the, to the Minister uh, of Agriculture. Uh, Honorable Tidiza, uh, 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 closing remarks. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Deputy Chair of NCOP, as well as the House Chairperson who handled one of our sessions, the Chief Whip, Deputy Ministers and MECs, as well as Special Delegates, Honorable Members of the NCOP. Once again, I wish to thank you for allowing us time today to deliberate on the importance of land and agriculture in South Africa. The approach taken to bring emissions of agriculture in the debate was opportune and very uh, appropriate, because as we all know, agriculture is a concurrent function. Since the sixth administration, together with the team of emissions, we have tried to work together to ensure that there's alignment in the work that we do we also share experiences, but also collaborate together in managing the sector. 
because what happens to one province does have an implication on the other. The COVID-19 um, interventions that we made is to ensure that we assist our smallholder farmers. We'll ask the table there to assist us and ensure that the minister's uh, closing remarks are not uh, interfered with. Uh, yes, we'll there are the challenges have indicated. We are actually now. Minister, Hello. please proceed. The MECs in their presentation. As the table to assist. Uh, Hello, Minister, sir? just unmute and then uh, speak closer to the mic. I'm not muted, sir. Okay. Please Thank proceed. you very much, sir. I just wanted to say that the issues that have emerged in this discussion which members have raised, also our MECs, is the need for have, to have a long-term mitigation strategy on drought in South Africa, which is a matter that we must continue to address, but also look at multiple strategies on how we can address this issue. The, again, the issue of the land question, particularly the speed resolution of claims has been raised as one of the issues, and land access for human settlement, as well as agriculture. The other issues that have been raised also relate to what uh, municipalities have raised in relation to this land matter. And specific land claims issues that have been raised by MECs that I'm sure we need to continue to address and engage with them on what we are trying to do on those. The ongoing support to farmers and communities post settlement of claims have also been raised as an issue by our honorable members and how best can we continuously support those who have received uh, land. I just want to say Chairperson in closing, I wish to thank all the MECs for allowing us to release 38 mobile laboratories in assisting the Department of Health and the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, NICD, during this process. May MEC meth, for instance, indicated in detail where even some of those laboratories are. But at national level, through the ARC, we also gave about six of our RNA extractors for the use of uh, NICD in the direct intervention on COVID-19. We may not be there in the limelight in terms of what we've done to contribute and supporting the Department of Health as the department, but these are some small contributions that we had made collectively and our MEC is allowing that while we do not have a problem of animal disease in some areas, these facilities can be used to attend the national pandemic a challenge that we're all facing. Chairperson, as I said again, the MECs have also indicated we will respond to those specific questions that appeared on the chart and those that were asked which members might feel have not been answered uh, enough. Thank you very much, uh, honorable member. No, thank you very much, uh, minister. Without uh, uh, further ado, uh, we'll move on to uh, a, a few words uh, from Jay Mohai, the chief whip. Honorable thank Mohai. you very much. Thank you very much, uh, chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. Let me, from the outset, take this opportunity to thank all members, permanent and special delegates, uh, Minister Didiza and Deputy Ministers, and, invite, and, and all those who were able to connect to these discussions uh, for fruitful engagements on this land issue, agriculture, uh, a conversation that is particularly thorny given its historical and collective and lived experience, experiences of our people. Agricultural sector is very important sector in South Africa, which carries massive job opportunities for our people in rural areas, but also contributes immensely to foreign exchange. What is becoming obvious is that the need for food production has drastically increased over time in our country, 
and this means production needs to increase in order to feed our people and grow our economy. The disproportionate loss of rainfall and extreme droughts that members reflected on and the minister have spoken about has indeed created problems in the sector. Although production has continued unabated, this is something that needs an urgent attention of the democratic government for greater support to farmers and the sector as a whole. Of course, this means a parliament, we, as parliament, we need to strengthen our oversight role in this regard to ensure that government institute the necessary interventions. I believe that the presentation by Minister Titiza, uh, MECs from all our provinces will come on handy when we identify areas of engagement in future. The issue of land is a historical problem. This, the, in this country, birth by uh, centuries of exclusion and dispossession, the process of land reform is therefore a necessary process towards correcting the injustices of the past and healing the nation. The promise of land restitution and reform must be understood within the context of empowering previously excluded sections of our society to participate in the sector as equal partners, not an, as an unwanted stepchildren. This is in line with government plans to create economic opportunities for our people and reduce inequality. The act of allowing previously marginalized people access and participate in agricultural economy is certainly an important measure. Uh, for us, land reform also relates to the speed at which our government facilitates the resolution of land claims of our people who were forcefully removed from their homes by the previous regime. So we, we will really urge government to continue with the work that, that decisive, decisively deal with crime committed within farming communities, which will include farm murderers, illegal evictions, unfair labor practices and human rights abuses. Uh, to conclude, Chair, a special thanks to the presiding officers for a sterling facilitation of uh, today's briefing and maintaining the decorum of the house. I must also thank the minister uh, and the deputy ministers for always being available to participate in our August house. I'm certain that many South Africans are pleased to hear the plans and commitments of our government to resolve the historical injustices surrounding land to take South Africa forward. We affirm the position of government to undertake this process in ways that privileges food security as much as it does justice. As provinces, we also have a greater role to play in ensuring maximum attention is given to the sector to implement the necessary transformation as well as giving support to improve and better production. Uh, so with that, uh, Chairperson, thanks very much uh, for today's session and proceedings. Thank you. Now, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, there being no other business, this interactive virtual uh, ministerial briefing is now declared closed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank